But I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's what we're instructed to say. Roser, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It is Thursday night, which means it's one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And what are those things, you may ask? <laughs> you know what those things are. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal. The government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. What's going on? I see you guys out there in the chat. Sorry for the late starts. I usually get to say hi before we started, but I I ran out of time. I plum ran out of time, and sometimes that's the way it goes. It w- if only I could step out of time. But, well, uh, unfortunately, it's not allowed in this uh, in, at this juncture. But what this show's about is those things and more. It's about us. It's about a conversation. It's about getting together and discussing not just news cycles, but uh, maybe letting our mind wander. Of course, conspiracy is one part of this, but uh, I think philosophy is another part of this. I think uh, maybe wondering about the nature of the universe and the nature of ourselves. I think that all kind of fits in here. And so as as such, you will find myself, Michael Strange, ranging far and wide on topics here. Because uh, number one, like I always say, if you're, if you're listening to uh, political talk shows all day long, talk about a waste of time. I mean, it's the same thing over and over and over again lefty righty vote this way vote that way and if you don't right you're you're a terrorist or you're you're a you're a conspiracy theorist right well tell you what i'm just throwing all of it out and saying go ahead both sides call me a conspiracy theorist, right? You see how this works. Again, of course, the dynamic of um, the division politics and uh, trying to make people hate each other because they voted for the wrong person. Yeah, well, it's all a joke to me at this point because um, I spent my time voting. I spent my time sending sending letters to my senators and my House Congress people and all the rest of this. And what do you get? A form letter and a and then you get their spam for <laughs> for but you get their spam for for donations. Like really. Really? Like the thing that I sent to you guys in the letter, uh, you, no, nobody actually even addressed. It didn't even come up in the conversation. You, you gave me a form letter that said, thanks, but no thanks. And then you send me 
like a, like a link for donations? Are you kidding me? I guess that's the way this, this is the way the world works, right? Um, is uh, are we not on fringe? Oops, I guess uh, I guess I didn't hit the... Oops, that's my bad. Sorry about that. Uh, welcome to the Fringe FM. Uh, this is Michael Strange, and I didn't hit the button to go. All right, so what we're doing tonight is this. Again, uh, aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal. And uh, what this is all about is you. The conversation is, uh, is about us. It's about all those things that I was discussing. Thanks, Daryl, for pointing that out, that I didn't press go. That's what happens when I run out of time. I uh, uh, don't press the most critical button is the go button. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so so what we're, what we're going to talk about tonight is uh, it's been weighing on my mind heavily quite often, and it's, it's the cryptocurrency conspiracy, all right? Now... It seems like uh, it's it, for us. It's a little bit, um, you would say, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe maybe two feet on the ground. Okay, for us in particular, uh, troubled minds. Meaning that uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we talk about, including some really really wild, far out there stuff. And uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Fred's got it right in the chat. Mike and his buttons. Right. I'm always muting myself, smashing the wrong button, not starting the radio stuff. Actually, it's not often, but it's often enough to annoy me. Uh, but anyway, okay, so. So that's what we're talking about tonight, and we'll get, we'll get to some of the particulars here because it's it's a fascinating conversation. And if you're if you're like, oh come on, Mike, I wanted the multiverse tonight, or zombies or something, right? Uh, we talk about that stuff too. But the, the issue is that there's a lot more to it than what you think uh, regarding the cryptocurrency conspiracies. But before we get started, of course, uh, like I said, uh, this, this show is less a show, more of a conversation. And as such, I have no inside sources. I'm just watching news cycles, just like you guys, and trying to figure out what in the hell is actually going on here but the thing is it goes a little something like this right uh, I don't have those inside sources so the secret weapon of troubled minds is you and what that means is uh, well give me a call uh, we have an open phone line and uh, you can give us a call there at 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 and we'll put you on the show you can also go to troubledminds.org and click the discord link that's the uh, troubledminds.org this is the official website and uh, if you uh, go there you'll find not only the phone number, you'll find the Discord link, and Discord is a chat client. It's a voice client, and it's uh, it's free. That's the best part about it. It's absolutely free. It allows us to have a, a sort of a phone calls with our international friends that uh, don't like the 702 area code. And there's the uh, the 702 area code for you. You find folks that would like to see that 702-957-1037, and uh, that's what we're doing. So okay. Uh, with that, let's see, what else do we got? There's a couple other things we got to talk about. What are they? Number one, we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. We are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Uh, now that I press the button, thanks, Daryl. <laughs> and and uh, the the the, uh, the other thing is, uh, please join us. I'm watching all the chat and all the places and trying to say hi to everybody uh, because, of course, this is a social stream. And if you uh, if you you hop in in the chat and say hi, I'll do my best to say hi back. So okay. So the thing is that uh, please join the Fringe FM Discord as well. I'm watching that as well as everything else. Fringe.fm/chat, and we'll put you. Uh, it'll uh, give a direct invite and i'll say hi there and the final thing is uh if the, the easiest way to listen to troubled minds is to download the fringe app you can find it on your favorite app store of course uh that would be itunes or android and it's free completely free download the fringe fm app and it's exactly 705 pacific time uh you'll find uh, monday through thursday you'll find me troubled minds and us because uh it's becoming troubled minds family becoming troubled minds nation so okay all right, now let's get to this. Now, now what makes now what makes me think uh, cryptocurrency and that sort of conspiracy is worthy of a discussion of troubled minds? Well, uh, if you don't know a lot about this, it is very, very deep into this rabbit hole, very compelling. And so, I was scanning through some of the news cycles today, as I always do, right? And I like to look for vampires or werewolves or you know, um, I don't know, multiverse zombies. And if we're being real, in the last I don't know, probably several weeks, I've been beating that multiverse ass all right to a little i think i think the multiverse needs a break all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna lay off the multiverse for a minute and let it catch its breath because i'll tell you what uh, M michael strange can be unrelenting uh, but the thing is this right i was uh, kind of cruising through news cycles and so i thought okay we've been all over the place but in this instance we've never really talked about cryptocurrency itself 
as a conspiracy. Now, in of course, now now there are layers and layers to this conspiracy. And what I mean by that is that it, at the very, very like first level conspiracy here is we have the banking cartels, right? We have the central banking cartels. We've talked about these guys a lot, and uh, you know they're they are. Um, let's say, mm, let's say I don't want to say like like flat out scandalous, but let's just say flat out scandalous. Let's say let's say flat out fellow scandalous. If you know what I'm saying, yeah, flat fellow out there, I see you, buddy, uh, over on Rockfin. Okay, so so the thing is this, right? Now, now Bitcoin. Uh, so so clearly, okay. So back to back to the original conspiracy. It goes like a little something like this: uh, that uh, this cryptocurrency was created uh, by the CIA, uh, the original Bitcoin and the blockchain itself, as a way to sort of usher in the new world order currency, right? The one world currency, and that's that's. That's the basic, right? That's that's like kind of getting off of the, the basic conspiracy of uh, this was created as a decentralized um, way to uh, make payments between people in an anonymous fashion, like good old fashioned cash, right? Like if you ha- you hand off cash at uh, at, at the, the liquor store, they don't know that you just bought a twelve pack of beer, right? Because uh, well, <laughs> unless of course they've got cameras and some other surveillance state stuff, right? But uh, so so point being is that cash is more of a, a, an anonymous type transaction. And that was the idea behind uh, this whole cryptocurrency Bitcoin thing in that uh, they wanted to create a digital cash. OK, and and through this, they, uh, there was the creation of this uh, this thing known as the blockchain, which is now all the rage. Everything's going on blockchains and these conspiracies. Right. They start there with, OK, did did the CIA create this? Is this a backdoor situation to start tracking people? Uh, because I've said in the past, not just in terms of uh, the surveillance state, which I'm extremely suspicious of. Right. And, and, and I'll get to that in just a sec. Why? Why? I mean, I think for obvious reasons, but there's some pretty good uh, cases to be made uh, that no matter what happens, they just want more surveillance. They be in the government, um, the technocrats, et cetera, on and on and on. But but uh, so if 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 there was a backdoor creation created through this Bitcoin, right, through this actual blockchain itself, that would mean that they are tracking, let's say, through the CIA, the NSA, something like this, uh, every single transaction, where money's going. And and again, right, they'll call it money laundering and things like this. They're trying to, you know, national security, which we'll get to in a sec. That's why it's in the news t- today, specifically, because uh, our good buddy Joe Biden, right, uh, Lunch Bucket Joe, is actually going to uh, a, a, do an executive order to send a task force to start cracking down. Uh, I say crack down, but what the what what they mean is, oh, you know, regulate uh, in the name of national security, cryptocurrency, right? Okay, so so now the the the, the craziest part about this to me is that um, I've always said that Fedcoin or whatever the 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 end of the. Uh, digital dollar, right, from the government, right? The digital dollar will be basically a lock-in of the final piece of that surveillance state, okay? And what I mean by that is that um, you're not going to be able to do anything without the government tracking every single thing you do, right? Uh, Even if it's like, let's say, quasi-legal, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not suggesting anybody should break the law, but what I am saying is that there's no chance. Once, Once they do away with paper money, forget it. It's over. It is over in the sense that there's no chance you can do anything. We're talking social credit scores. We're talking mass surveillance on a level never seen on this planet once this digital dollar comes into place. And so one of those conspiracies and the ideas here of the actual conspiracy of Bitcoin itself is that People, the, the government knew all along that there's no chance we would just easily adopt a digital dollar because clearly for all, the, all those reasons I stated, it's a, it's a gigantic invasion of privacy. It's a, it's a fiat, a fiat currency. They don't even have to print paper for anymore. Like at least the cost of paper was he- holding them back from printing the trillions. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wink, wink, pallets of paper, right? But right. It, what happens when they don't even have to do that anymore at all? It's digital. It's hosted on servers and all the rest of this stuff right so anyway uh, so so there's a lot of there's a lot of really deep level conspiracy here with uh, cryptocurrency and the digital dollar fed coin it's called is what they're calling this so i don't know uh, or, or uh, is it fed i think it's fed coin so okay point being is this the questions tonight are what are your thoughts 
on cryptocurrency. Do you think this is a huge conspiracy of sorts? Do you think there's something um, amiss here? Do you think that the Bitcoin itself and all the, the Ethereum and all the stuff that came after it with all the other blockchains uh, are not just a possible, let's say, Ponzi scheme by, oh, I don't know, the Russian mafia or the Chinese government or the CIA? Insert bad guy here, right? Uh, or is this um, literally, as they're describing it, some sort of a blockchain uh, decentralization of not just um, uh, people's ability to uh, anonymously send payments, but also maybe a way to change voting regulations and things like this. I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, are you suspicious of the blockchain? And are you suspicious of uh, Bitcoin as a conspiracy? And we're going to get to all kinds of wild things tonight. So don't worry. Uh, I will not let you down. We've got some pretty nutty things to talk about tonight, including let's just throw it out there for teasers before we get there. Uh, it Was Bitcoin itself created by the first internet singularity as a way to enslave humanity. There's one, right? How about another one? How about Bitcoin as a fungus? All right, there's another one. There's all kinds of crazy stories here, all kinds of crazy conspiracies regarding this. And so my question to you tonight is this. Do you trust the blockchain? What do you think is going on with this thing? And what is with Satoshi Nakamoto? Satoshi Nakamoto. We're going to get to him as well. He's the founder of Bitcoin. He's the one who invented Bitcoin. Except, you know what? There's a little wrinkle in this. You know why? Because nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. All right. Now, if that doesn't make your spider sense tingle and you want to strap on some more tinfoil, I don't know what does. So anyway, let's get to this. And uh, 702, what are your thoughts on this? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is where I started tonight. I looked at this and I was like, all right, uh, this is from BitcoinMagazine.com. And this is happening. This is, uh, this is hitting the news like crazy right now. Uh, headline is this. Biden administration to regulate Bitcoin as a matter of national security per a report. All right. The White House wants to bring order to the, uh, quote, haphazard approach that is currently being employed by regulators to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Uh, The White House, right from the article here, the White House wants to set out a cohesive set of policies to regulate Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as currently uh, as uh, current legislation and its enforcement are scattered across sectors and agencies, according to multiple reports. Now, you see what's happening here. So uh, the the entire idea of a blockchain in Bitcoin itself and cryptocurrencies is decentralization. And they're getting squirmy, right? They're like, okay, wait, they're taking buying power away from the the, the fiat dollar. We're printing the the hell out of this stuff. Inflation's on the rise. And uh, suddenly, of course, what will happen as a result is people will start adopting this decentralized platform, not just this one in particular. There's Ethereum, all these other ones, Solano, et cetera, so on, right? There's a lot of different cryptocurrencies, different blockchains, all the rest of that. But they're, 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 they're talking about doing this on as a matter of national security. You understand what I'm saying here? Like, this is wild. Okay, and it goes like this. The Biden administration will release an executive order in the coming weeks to task federal agencies with assessing the risks and opportunities that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies pose, Bloomberg first reported. The order is set to come under the umbrella of national security efforts as the administration seeks to analyze cryptocurrencies and employ a cohesive regulatory framework that would cover Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, stable coins, and NFTs, Barron's reported Thursday. Quote, This is designed to look holistically at digital assets and develop a set of policies that give coherency to what the government is trying to do in this space. A person familiar with the White House's plans told Barron's, because digital assets don't stay in one country, it's necessary to work with other countries on synchronization. Oh, I see. Synchronization, they say. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, this this is the type of thing, right, that, uh, again, makes my the hair stand up on the back of my neck because this is again uh, sort of that if the idea was again it depends on which level of conspiracy you believe if the idea was that uh, Bitcoin was created as some sort of a the, that, that final piece of the surveillance state to allow us the, the regular people out there the unwashed masses the the, the, the plebs whatever you want to call us right the useless eaters if, if you 
if if that's the case and they created this to fool us to get us to adopt this fed coin this digital dollar right once they do this and they they just start cracking down on it to make it a cohesive thing all of all of the blockchains well then it's no longer decentralized is it it becomes a centralized asset which in the end will become what do you think fed coin <laughs> fed coin so so there's there's another conspiracy was this put in place to get early adoption and excitement that they were going to really stop pressing this fiat money stuff and have some have like an extra actual fiat currency digital that was decentralized that was run by regular people all right is that, is that the illusion is that the mirage and that's what i'm talking about here tonight how deep does this rabbit hole go what do you think about crypto uh, cryptocurrency is there a conspiracy here is it just a big ponzi scheme is this a big setup by the cia to uh to basically put us in well uh in, into the adoption of this whatever this fed coin comes next uh and i don't like the term when they use uh, in the name of national security, all right? That always makes me get a little bit agitated because, like I said, if you look at uh, 9-11, right, for instance, uh, tragic, terrible, all those things, you also have, uh, they found that they found within themselves to pass a bar bipartisan thing called the Patriot Act. And the crazy part about it is it kind of had a lot, uh, it had very little to do with patriotism, right? It had very, very much to do with a an increased surveillance state to keep everybody safe, safe. What's up, Indigo Kid in the chat says, Mike FYI this morning, Dr. Phil did an hour on cryptocurrency. That's all right. I'm pretty sure he's not going to do it like I'm going to do it. But in any case, so so how does it make you feel knowing that the Biden administration just uh, just put out a, a, a they, they announced they're going to put in an executive order to sort of wrangle up all the crypto into one space and uh, see what the government's going to do with it. I think the thing that's interesting and notable and scary is, well, uh, social credit scores, is I think, well, uh, that final piece of the surveillance state, like I said. So back to that 9-11 thing, the Patriot Act, just just to finish my point there as my my, my brain rambles all over the place, is that uh, notice it, it, when 9-11, they decided that the best thing to do to keep everybody safe was to increase surveillance. They put in that FISA court, which which has had a ton of uh, a ton of heat and criticism since then. If you listen to Sean Hannity, he like uh, bleated on for like three years straight about the FISA courts and like uh, unmanageable masking people and American citizens and uh, surveillance and all the rest of this stuff. Uh, but then, right, so there's that. Increased surveillance, right? TSA. They started uh, feeling up people's genitals at the airport, right? Things like this started happening. So that was the way we became more safe. We became more safe uh, through their surveillance state. But then notice, again, with this pandemic, uh, very similar measures, okay? Uh, instead of, well, just, uh, you know, patting you, feeling your genitals at the TSA, uh, the, the FISA courts and extended surveillance. What did they do instead? Well, that contact tracing. And you know what contact tracing is? <laughs> That's right. Extended surveillance. It's one more piece in this ubiquitous surveillance state. And so my point is, the final piece is once you can no longer spend money at all ever without the government knowing where the transa transaction took place and how much it took place for and what the exchange of goods was, well, <laughs> what's the point in doing anything anymore, right? You may as well just call up the government to tell them you're going to take a dump, right? Sorry to go back to the toilet humor, but I mean, come on. Is this where we're at? This is where we're at. So anyway, that's what's on my mind tonight regarding not just this, uh, the surveillance state, Bitcoin itself, this uh, by the administration to regulate Bitcoin as a matter of national security, right? This is the type of stuff I'm talking about. And uh, it's um, it's unsettling. So there's, there's a lot here, right? There's a lot here. We'll get to it. If you've never heard of Satoshi Nakamoto, stay tuned because this gets absolutely wild. And as we get down to this, you know what's going on tonight. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, but... We're going to just peel off the, some, some down-to-earth, good old-fashioned conspiracy and talk about cryptocurrencies, talk about Bitcoin. Is this a big Ponzi scheme? Is this a setup to usher in FedCoin and the final piece of the surveillance state? What are your thoughts? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And, uh, yeah, I'm Michael Strange. This is Troubled Minds. More Satoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoin, 
and the blockchain when we return. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. We're taking your phone calls tonight as we discuss... uh, Discuss, see what I did there. As we discuss Satoshi Nakamoto, cryptocurrency conspiracies, and what in the world is going on with this. Love to hear your thoughts at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Thanks for waiting, gentlemen. Let's go to Joseph in Iowa. Welcome to Troubled Minds. How are you tonight, my friend? Go right ahead. Hey, uh, I don't know much about Bitcoin, but I have my brother. He actually has Bitcoin miners, and he works for a mining company. And they, uh, since Iowa, it's cheap. You got cheaper land and cheap electricity. Like a lot of Bitcoin mines are around this area. And, uh, I, I do, I don't know much about it. I told, uh, I mean, there's like machines that you can get that just mine Bitcoin. And then there's like other machines that can mine all the cryptos. And, uh, like they like they can generate fifty dollars a day. So like that's the difference is like Bitcoin is like ran by the people. So if the people stop buying machines, Bitcoin wouldn't work. Kind of thing. It's like a network ran by the people. Exactly. So so that that's the whole point of decentralization is that it's not run by the Federal Reserve, right? It's not run by fiat currency and the government at large. It's actually uh, has has that idea about decentralization run by the people it's sort of like fiat for the people and if they continue to like put their time and energy into it uh it continues to to build power to gain strength and and in this interesting article today again bitcoin magazine they're talking about this from five hours ago biden administration to regulate bitcoin as a matter of national security now let me ask you joseph do you think that uh that sort of decentralization and people kind of galvanizing behind a particular thing like this is a matter of national security or do you think that's a <laughs> a stretch too far? What do you think? Um, yeah, I think it could be. Uh, it it could cause problems. I don't. I don't think it's going anywhere. Like a lot of people are talking, like it's not going anywhere. But it eats so much power. I don't see why it wouldn't be. It like like I it uses literally. I looked it up. Finland, the entire country of Finland worth of power each year so i mean that that alone for what you know it's just like um i mean i wouldn't definitely want to put all my bread in one basket in the crypto market for sure yeah but and no. plus you don't know like the beginning like it formed by someone we don't know and all the people that used it back in the day, they were using it for messed up things. They were using it for drugs and crime. And all those people with tons of Bitcoin that were trading it for crime, when it went up to 50K, you know they were cashing out. And who knows what whatever happened to all those lucrative people. You know, they're living it up now. That's what kind of makes me mad because that already happened. Yeah, well, and it's going to continue to happen is, is the thing, right? It just depends. Uh, like uh, this, this cryptocurrency stuff, like there, there's a Bitcoin hack seemingly every week now. And we were told that the blockchain is unhackable. The, the, the entire idea of a blockchain is that decentralization. So so do you, how about this then? Do you think that maybe this entire Bitcoin blockchain thing was cooked up by the CIA and they built a backdoor into this? Uh, so that they could uh, be tracking all this all along, and it's just this is just a big, a big ploy to make us adopt that Fed coin, like I was saying. What do you think about that conspiracy? I think it's possible, but I could see us evolving an even better. Like I think another one is Ethereum, 
that my brother mines. He likes Ethereum and I forgot the other ones. But he they he seems to think that they're not going to go away. Yeah, unless they unless they crack down on it. And so you could. And so if I was the government and I wanted to make it go away, you know what I would do? I would tax the hell out of it. And that would drop drop the uh, the actual uh, value of that stuff like overnight. And it would be irrecoverable. And you could control it through taxation because you could just say, all right, uh, we're going to do like a 50% tax on every uh, crypto transaction that actually has to get converted back to fiat. And then, and then they'll be like, okay, so the counter to that is, well, okay, so then what we'll do is, well, more places, more businesses will start adopting Bitcoin directly. Well, then the government will say, nope, you're not allowed to. We're going we're gonna to regulate that as well. And you can't do that without converting it to fiat first, right? Now, there's a lot of ways they can crack down on this. And this is what's a little bit worrying about i don't even know what to think because like you said could it be a a actual threat to national security could this be like a a a gag cooked up uh, cooked up by the russian mafia or the chinese government Uh, or the cia like i said maybe maybe so i don't know like i'm not sure who's being played here if it's us or if it's us you know what i'm saying (laughs) or or who who, who's uh, who's pulling the strings don't mind the man behind the curtain joseph don't man don't mind that guy (laughs) you know what i'm saying yeah i'm not I'm not sure. I like the idea of, of, of it kind of like, but it's, it's leaves, a it, it, it's, it is like, it leaves people out too, though. You need money to get into stuff like this. It's not like, Oh, this new thing came and now I'm, uh, I'm, I don't have to worry anymore because I got, I got the Bitcoin, you know, it's like, You got to have, and that's what the banks would be able to just buy into it. Even if they could just buy a bunch of miners and, or they wouldn't even need to, I don't know. Yeah. It's a pretty hard to, with, with the, with the control, like a back door though, and screwing everyone over, over time, I'm sure like they've already made tons off of it then like somehow like if that's what it's been they've been probably pumping and dumping or something i don't know how all that works but yeah exactly exactly and and so so i'm not sure i again back to back to how where all this began right have you heard of this this character named satoshi nakamoto now uh, oddly enough, this guy is credited as as creating the first initial blockchain and Bitcoin itself. But the the scary part, right? The actual scary part is nobody knows who this cat is or was. And clearly, this dude would have more money Bitcoin wise, like billions of dollars, in his crypto wallet as being the inventor of this thing. But he hasn't stepped up and like become anybody yet. He's still a figure in the shadows, uh, like like a mythology, like Darth Vader in a in a cloak that you don't know who's behind the mask, right? We've got a name, but we don't have a person claiming that name. And to me, that right there makes my spider sense tingle. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right uh, on. I appreciate it, my friend. What else you got for us tonight? Don't. The only reason I would think that is because he just doesn't want people to know who he's affiliated with, obviously. Or if it's just a just just a just an anonymous pseudonym for the CIA (laughs) or the Russian mafia or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, It's it's impossible to know. And that's why, like I said, it's interesting that uh, if if you look into this a little bit, it, it it's. I think you can find pretty quickly there's some unsettling things about it. But a lot of people don't even know who this Satoshi Nakamoto character is, even in the idea of who he's supposed to be, right? As, you know, as, as a figure, as a, a figurehead in this whole crypto thing. So I don't know. Uh, you tell me. I, I have no idea here. But uh, uh, so are you into the crypto market? You think this is something we should look into or you think we should be extremely cautious? I think mining, it's... If the mining is profitable, it, it, right now Bitcoin went down, so mining Bitcoin isn't as profitable anymore. But once it jumps back, like once it starts getting traded, you're making fifty dollars a day off of a rig. Yeah. No. So yeah. If you have. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
and that's money. You just convert that to straight dollars. You don't yep. even need to leave it in Bitcoin. Yep. yep. So I think it's definitely something to look at as like, uh, but it's a gamble, you know, two years, let's say two years from now, you have the machine paid off. You pay 12 grand for that machine, you know, but then they ban it, you know, then you just broke even. Or if they, six months from now, they ban it, and then you lost 6,000. It's kind of one of those things. Exactly, exactly. And or, uh, again, it, it starts to make you wonder, right? Like, what in, what the heck is actually going on here? I appreciate the call, my friend. Uh, let me know if uh, if you get into the crypto market. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on this, and uh, let me know how your portfolio is going. <laughs> Joseph, you're yeah. the best. I appreciate the phone call. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being part of this. Joseph here has a, a YouTube channel. It's called Hydro Hose. Links in the description, guys. Scroll down. Give him some love. Uh, he's uh, consistently calling in with some great ideas and uh, challenging uh, the, the status quo of what our mind actually is or should be. You're the best, Joseph. I appreciate the call. Have a great night, bro. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, we're still taking your phone calls here. Considering what's going on, what is this cryptocurrency stuff? Is this the conspiracy of all conspiracies? Meaning, did the CIA or the Chinese government or the Russian mafia or insert bad guy X here, we'll just call them, oh, I don't know, Satoshi Nakamoto. Is this really the final piece in their surveillance state puzzle? Is this what's going on? Is this a big trick to dupe us useless eaters into adopting the the Fed coin, the digital dollar. And that's what's on my mind tonight. It, I can't quite place it, but something about this doesn't sit well with me. Meaning, who the heck is Sato Satoshi Nakamoto? Uh, still looking to hear your thoughts on this. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. I see you guys out there on the fringe. Uh, I see you. What's up? What's up over on the fringe discord? Uh, Lacey says, it's strange that two years ago, the government was saying coin shortage. Don't use cash. Oh, weird coincidence, is it not? What's up, Ryan Gable? I see you over there. We got uh, an S magician. Legit. Legit. All right, let's go. Let's go to uh, Joe in Florida. Thank you for being patient with me, my friend. Welcome to Troubled Minds. You're on with Mike. Go right ahead. Good evening. Buy the dip. Buy the, buy the dip. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's already a T-shirt. So, but, but go right ahead, sir. Yeah. So, listen, I love where you're going with this, and it's kind of funny, because uh, today I was seeing a family at the funeral home, and the guy I was talking to was an economics major, and I hit him with a couple of things, which I would say is probably my own conspiracy, because I haven't heard of it yet, but um, as far as actors, you're right, Chinese, CIA, Russians, I don't really know, I look at this as... If you go back to the creature from Jekyll Island, where we tried to tie everybody to the American dollar after the war, if they were really, really smart, they would have seen the future and known that our money couldn't have been dominant for how many years? Okay. So is our money dominant? It still is dominant, but our money, fiat currency is being debased. Today I told this guy we were talking, and, um, I said, timing, you know, I always say that on the show, timing is ever. So what's going on right now? we got a virus. What's going on in this country? We keep debasing the dollar. How do we keep debasing? And when I say debasing, I mean devaluing the dollar. Simple high school economics. We keep borrowing from the Fed or borrowing from ourselves, but not really from ourselves. It's from the Fed, the private banking institute. My best prediction would be this. We bailed out companies in 2006 and 2007, okay? We bailed them out with our, our future taxes and our future kids' taxes. Now we have COVID, okay? Sun Tzu says the art of war, the best way to defeat your enemies without a shot. So when I start looking at the Chinese, but then I can look at the Chinese and say, they're the puppet for the NWO. You take the amount, and I'm curious to see how the Biden government, or whatever administration is going to handle it, there's probably going to be a wave of medical bankruptcies hitting this country for everybody that's been in that hospital. Not to mention everybody sounding me along about student loans. However you feel about that, I've got an expensive piece of paper sitting on my wall that I do nothing with because I'm a funeral director and not teaching social studies somewhere, but I digress. 
How much can you debase the dollar? We've already seen inflation. Now, inflation could be just rich people jacking prices up, but there are some inflationary pressures here. Okay. Um, I look at the euro and the coin, the euro coin, as kind of a first attempt at getting everybody in Europe together on one currency. And the British, you know, Brexit, the British left. Okay. When you look at crypto, there's millions of coins. What I see a lot of is fleecing of people. When a whale comes in, you know, I have some, I have an account on eToro, and I do have some Bitcoin that I just don't look at. But when a whale comes in, it's easier for that whale. And when I say a whale, when somebody throws a million dollars in the ring for something that's worth barely a penny stock, it jacks it up. They pump and dump it, like Joe Joseph was saying. And then the rest of us could be left holding the bag if we don't know what we're doing. If Biden, the fact that the government is trying to get a handle on this just obviously means the government is acknowledging it. And that it probably is not going to go away. So, A, they're either trying to protect our currency, because they might see the currency collapsing, or fiat currency collapsing in the future. Maybe not so far away, so they're trying to protect it. Or they're trying to keep everything in place, like you said, and next thing you know, it's a magic trick, it's Fed coin. In the movie Zeke Zeitgeist, which I saw a long time ago, and I'm just kind of going straight through before I lose my train of thought, in the movie Zeitgeist, I believe in the end, and one of the few things I remember, was that at some point in time, they're going to take your money, and they're going to say, okay, you got 10 grand cash in the bank, but we're going to give you three grand of something else. Okay? And when Zeitgeist came out, Bitcoin wasn't even a thought, as far as I know. Okay? So, you know, that's my thought. Now, going down even further down the rabbit hole, okay, Joseph says that, and it's true, Bitcoin mining takes a lot of power currently. But what happens in the future if the environment is so bad that we're all locked in, and we see this in dystopian TVs, you know, just uh, dystopian novels and TV shows, that we could work from home. We know from this virus, social experiments, whatever you want to call it, because I know we don't want to get political and argue about it, but we do, do know that people were working from home and office buildings were shut down. And when an office building is shut down, it doesn't require power, it doesn't require air conditioning, and it probably requires very little maintenance. So in the future, if the environment's so wrecked, and maybe we have electric cars, maybe we don't, I would maybe think that servers that would probably be more efficient in the future could probably run all those transactions with a lot less power usage than they do now because they would be dedicated. There wouldn't be a video game graphics card running that server. Okay. And then we're all home. We get up. You know, there's episodes on uh, Black, or is it, uh, Black Mirror, I think, in the show. I watched the first season. Um, there's episodes like that where we would all just be holed up we could trade our transactions. Maybe we could trade them for virtual goods. Like you said, you will have nothing and you will like it. It could be a virtual good. Or maybe we could trade it for actual goods that we could use in whatever dystopian, screwed up surveillance state we're going to live in. So um, it's a mouthful, but I hope you took it in and it makes some sense. I don't know. Yeah, so so real quick before you go though, what what about this Satoshi Nakamoto character? Do you think it is this is just a big CIA psyop to to get us to adopt a Bitcoin without us or sorry, not Bitcoin, Fedcoin without us even knowing? Like like you said, the the switcheroo. It's like, oh, uh, Biden does the executive order, Congress agrees because it's a national security threat. Because of course nothing can get Congress uh, to agree faster than you say national security threat. They're like, Oh hell yeah, I'm voting for that, right? Because it's it's all how you frame it. But but do you think this is maybe a huge trick just to get us to, to finally lock in that final piece of that surveillance puzzle? I think it's a huge trick because here's the thing. It would be foolish. It's a fool's errand to run after and try to stop these things. 
they'll always be, if people want to do bad things, they'll always find a way to do bad things. So if you can't trade crypto, I mean, when you said that, I kind of wrote a note. Biden wants to like regulate every transaction that's like $700 or more. I forget what it was that we couldn't take out more than 700 bucks or something without them surveilling it. And yep. it kills me because we do have mil- we do have billionaires in this country that are not beholden to this country. They don't pay their taxes. That's a whole other political conversation. Okay. But we're being put in this predicament. And then who's going to control it? Yeah, Satoshi Nakamoto is probably some kind of anagram, some kind of something for a group. And the other reason why I say that is because, A, my, it's in the chat, my last name is Gambino. My dad was in a little bit of organized crime. And you don't say. There was a scene in Goodfellas. <laughs> there's a scene in Goodfellas. Well, there's a scene in Goodfellas where they do the Lufthansa heist. And God bless his soul, he's dead, so I don't even care. But he knew some people. And in the movie, which was part of, you know, a lot of that movie was true. I mean, it was Hollywood, well, you know, it was made for Hollywood. But when you did something, and he had probably done some crooked stuff, when you did something, you didn't brag about it. You stayed quiet. You didn't flaunt it. So if you got all that money, you didn't flaunt it. But it's human nature to want to go out and buy rich people's things. So what I'm getting at is back then, it was probably very hard to track those things, even though they stole the money and everything else. And they probably had surveillance on these people. But I would think that it's easier now. So if this guy that's in theory, this dude that invented it, if he really does exist, he's doing an awfully good job of living in a cave, maybe where Osama bin Laden was hanging out. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't <You> think know? <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> uh, Joe, you're amazing. As you know, we're out of time. You're the best, my friend. Joe in Florida has been a, a friend of the show, a friend of mine for a very long time. I appreciate you listening, my man. I appreciate your hot takes on this stuff, and uh, your calls are always great. Have a fantastic uh, weekend, and uh, God bless you and the family, my man. I may call you after midnight. Let's see where this goes. Very okay. good show, though. Right on. You're very have welcome. Have a good night. Too. You're very welcome, too. I'll see you then, and uh, have a fantastic one. Talk to you soon. There we go. That's Joe in Florida. I see you on the phone, Robert. I don't want to give you a short amount of time here, so hang tight till after the break, and we'll get right to you. Uh, amazing stuff. And and that's that's what's on my mind tonight. What's going on with this? We got these the cryptocurrency thing happening, right? And uh, again, it's taken. It's Bitcoin has taken a beating in the last like probably week or ten days. Uh, why though? Because because of course, right? If we're talking Ponzi schemes, if we're talking uh, the pump and dump. If we're talking, you know, more ways to pump money into the pockets of the elites. Well, they knew this was coming. And so what do they do? They move their money out when it's at, a, at, at the high. It dumps. And all all the, the average Joes like us and Joe and Joseph there that just called are, you like, you like how we did that? The average Joes. What's up, average Joes? You guys are more than average in my opinion. You guys are fantastic. Uh, but, but the thing is, we get left holding the bag because they knew this thing was coming because by Biden will put this out to the to his donors and everybody else and let them know in that sort of wink wink insider trading fashion. Hey guys, the the, the Bitcoin crackdown is coming. You've got six weeks to get out, and then they get out, and guess what's left? Us holding the bag, and not only holding the bag, then they decimate it with taxation and no representation. Oh, boy. I said it. That's right. I said it. All right. As we continue talking about this, what are your thoughts? I have no idea. I wish I was the answers guy because answers are easy. You just say the answers. You start the show. You read your list of answers, and then you end the show. No, it's not as easy as that. Life is complicated. It is not a binary equation. There are shades of gray. And what do you think is going on with this Bitcoin? What about this shady character that nobody knows who he is, but we all have a name? Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah, that's right. The inventor of Bitcoin, except nobody knows who he is. Do you think this is a big Ponzi scheme? Do you think this is some sort of PSYOP? Do you think this is like they say it is and just decentralized currency? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More Bitcoin, blockchains, and Satoshi Nakamoto when we return. Be right back. We 
are talking about alien, the alien abduction phenomenon. Alien, 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 alien. The aliens are, are looking through your eyes and they're accessing your optic nerve. I'm doing this. Through that optic nerve, they're transferring to your brain. People are talking about the alien abduction phenomenon. They traverse neurons in the brain. So got, all right, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, and they also feel them planting or receiving memories or ideas or images. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It is Thursday night, which is one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. And what are those things, you may wonder? Well, let me explain. No, no, too much. Let me sum up. We talk about aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle propaganda and the general feeling that we live in the upside down we are live on rockfin youtube d live and twitter and of course we're broadcasting live on the fringe fm and we're taking your phone calls tonight as always transparency is an important thing to me hey if you want to say mike what's your fascination with bitcoin pick up the phone and call and guess what i'll tell you but right Try and call Don Lemon. Try and call Sean Hannity. Try and get a hold of any of these guys because you can't. Because they're propagandists. Because they screen their calls. Because they make sure that you're part of the echo chamber or else you can't get in. And in the case of Don Lemon, you can't get in at all. And I'm talking about Sean Hannity on radio, obviously. But anyway, so point being is, hey, look, if you if you uh, are into what I'm saying or you're not, you think I'm full of it or the other thing, that's transparency. We have a phone number. We have a Discord. You can hop in here and say, what's up? What are we talking about? What is this about? And give me your take on it. And even say, Mike, I think you're off the rails here. And that's okay, because at Troubled Minds, we basically live off the rails. Like, what's the point, right? Otherwise, you, we're going to be talking propaganda like everybody else. We parse the propaganda. We don't talk propaganda here. So if you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org and the phone number's there. Also join the Fringe FM Discord at fringe.fm slash chat. And the easiest way to listen to Troubled Minds and all the rest of the great programming at Fringe is to download the Fringe app. You can find that at uh, your, the iTunes App Store and the Android App Store. And it is completely free. Uh, at 7 o'clock, uh, precisely, Monday through Thursday, smash the play button. You'll get Troubled Minds. And then you'll get Joe Roop lighting the void. And then you'll get Ryan Gable and then uh, and all kinds of other stuff. Even, bef- even before I go on, there's, uh, there's great uh, programs airing. So uh, check it out. If if you have not, uh, fringe.fm, and of course, you could find that on uh, uh, the website itself or uh, the the uh, the app stores. All right, so what we're talking about tonight is Satoshi Nakamoto and Bitcoin. Is this a big scam? Do you think that Satoshi Nakamoto is actually uh, a, a way to describe the CIA without actually just saying the CIA? Love to hear your thoughts on this, and uh, let's go to, thanks, Robert, for being patient with us. Let's go to Robert in Pennsylvania. The Robert, welcome to Troubled Minds. Go right ahead, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, you know, my wife and I have different ways of paying bills, right? Um, how, she allows for her receipts to be electronic receipts. I don't, all right? Um, how often have you gone on to pay a credit card or maybe even a mortgage payment or whatever uh, electronically, and they bug you, you know, save some trees, all right, 
instead of getting your your receipt and your bill in the mail, accept you know electronically. And 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 I never do that because I I I like to get that in the mail for two reasons. One, it keeps the postal. The United States Postal Service at least gets gets them some business. But the second, the most important reason is, if things go down, all right, it, like you talked about, a solar flare or or an e or or, or, or one, what's it called when the when EMP blow, electromagnetic blow pulse an EMP yep. yeah, EMP uh, it's all gone. You have no proof you paid. All right, they can come back to you and say. Uh, we our records. We, we, we you owe you still owe twenty thousand dollars on a house that I paid <laughs> off. All right, uh, so that's why I do that. The same goes with Bitcoin or or all those other uh, virtual what I call virtual reality coins. All right, um, once something like that happens, yeah, you know, your money. You, you know, you have. It's gone. You have no proof that you even had any, all right? I can't see how people can't see this. There are still people on YouTube who are pushing, pumping, you know, Bitcoin, even though it's had such a drastic, it's been virtually cut in half in value since November, all right? Still pushing it. It's still telling people it's going to wind up going back up and it's going to hit $100,000, all right? It's not going to. It's not going to. If anybody's noticed something, whenever the stock market takes a dive, so does Bitcoin. Bitcoin takes a dive right with the stock market. It's like it's, it's, like it's uh, uh, joined at the hip with the stock market. I find that very suspicious. Now, you, uh, as a Rockfin host, you get, some pay, you get paid in, in Bitcoin, don't you? Yeah, it's actually not Bitcoin. It's uh, it's known as RAE. It's 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 the actual Rockfin token. So it's not. I mean, it is cryptocurrency. It's on their own blockchain. But no. So yes and no. But but so for instance, if you send me a tip on Rockfin, which you have several times, thank you very much for that, my friend. It does go to a crypto fund called RAE. It's an RAE token. So it is kind of, but it's not Bitcoin exactly. It's like a Bitcoin uh, knockoff, let's say. And, and I mean that in the nicest way. Hi, Rockfin guys. <laughs> is, is that is that something like is unique just to Rockfin? Is, is is that their own coin? Yeah, that's their own coin. Exactly. That's that's the the, the coin they created. So the entire thing is built on uh, a blockchain, and it is their own coin. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And, and you're comfortable with that? Well, what can you do? I so it, basically, if you send me twenty bucks, uh, I can cash out the twenty bucks immediately, and it's twenty bucks. Like fiat, right? Like okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. so it's it's so, yeah. So you're not having to store it in some kind of wallet somewhere for, you know, for the future where you know where where it goes up in value. Uh, supposedly, you're hoping it goes up in value, and that's sort of, you don't have you don't do that. I do do that, but I don't have to do that. I could cash it out and uh, put put it under my mattress or whatever. Definitely, but I do do okay. that because so when I, somebody when somebody buys a uh, let's say right now a bitcoin. Is worth around little, you know. Last time I looked, it was just under thirty six thousand dollars for a coin, a full coin. All right. So now, I can't. I'm not going to go and buy and spend thirty six thousand dollars for for a virtual reality coin. All right. Who can afford that? Well, okay, right? okay. So but what they do is they break it down into pieces. Exactly. You exactly. can buy pieces of a bitcoin, just like you could have pennies, dimes, nickels, and quarters. All right, so you can do that. All right, so I just don't, well, anyway, and now they've got NFTs. This is really <laughs> taking it beyond all common sense, where I could take a, take and create a, 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 a coin uh, uh, with me, with, with, a, with a, a cartoon character, or, you know, a Ronald McDonald, all right, and somebody's going to spend spend a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, some 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 even a million dollar, millions of dollars to buy that coin. Who in their right mind would do that? Because you can't put it on your wall. <laughs> it's 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 in the it's in the uh, ether. It's in, it's a virtual reality coin. You're not going to be able to look look at my coin here. All right, 
you can't even brag on it. <laughs> you, what? You, you can. No, you can because you could actually have it uh, tied into your wallet and uh, your actual, you know, like uh, uh, like you said, like a, a wallet on your phone or whatever. And then you could show it to people. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow, that's worth that's worth a lot of that's worth spending a lot of money just so I can just show have bragging rights and show it to people. Oh my goodness, I just can't believe these can't be real wealthy, uh, smart people doing this. Doing this, you know, they're luring in some real suckers with this stuff, and 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 these NFTs are going to go be, are going to wind up uh, in the history bid. You know, for of suckers, even uh, even before uh, Bitcoin and Doge and all those other coins finally go off, and and their little run like tulips in the 1600s. Um, I, I have a I, I I get financial advice online from some from different things, and one of the one of the uh, nicknames they give to Bitcoin is Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, so, so uh, we're we're I'm, not. I'm, th- th- uh, by the way, just so j- we have to say it now, we're, we are not financial advisors, and this is not financial advice. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. I, I, I'd be the last person to give financial advice. Um, but you know, it's no different than our own currency, our own dollars. You know, when when the when when they when they were sending out those stimulus checks last year. They didn't send cash to the to your bank account. They sent digital code. <laughs> you know, so it was it was digital dollars that they sent and put in your bank account. They don't. I don't think they really print paper cash much anymore. Yeah, well, I, and I think that's the bizarre part of it. Even if they did, the cost of paper is so so laughable. I mean, we get we get like junk mail in the mail that's paper because it's cost effective <laughs> so it's like it's like one of the cheapest things and so we're like oh let's save some money and not even have to print on paper anymore we'll just make it digits you know, widgets in the uh in, in the uh, what what the the ether sphere or whatever uh, vaporware i don't know i don't know man so so do you think in the end and, this is just and, a big ponzi scheme do you think that's what this is all about oh of course it is anybody that thinks that the dollar is going to crash anytime soon is 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 not is really doesn't know what they're talking about. Right now, the dollar is at an all time high. It's 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 very much close to one hundred cents on you know in the exchange, right? And 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 dollars dollars are not virtual reality. Do, do, what am I trying to say? Dollars won't be debased. Stocks are what's being debased. They're overpriced. And that's what's happening on the market right now. They've been over, way over, overvalued for uh, you know years, and it just got it's gotten worse and worse, and worse because the the the, the uh, protection that they get from the Federal Reserve has been pumping it, pumping it, and pre- and any time it tr- goes to drop, they 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 start to pump the money back in to prop that back up. Look what's been happening. For the last, oh, what, week and a half, maybe two weeks, right? You'll see the stocks drop down to, stock market drop down to nasty, nasty lows. And then the next day it'll start to go. But what you're seeing now is that they, the stock market opens up and it goes to a nice high. It looks like today, <laughs> almost 700 points, all right? But by the close of today, it was in, in negative territory. That's a sign, a very bold sign, all right, of a collapse uh, of the whole house of cards. That's been going on for days like that. And, and so if you've got any, any money in the stock market, cash this stuff in now. Um, <laughs> and again, this is we are not financial advisors, and this is not financial advice. <laughs> but, but go ahead. It's 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 a it's a joke, anyway, and it's also and, you, and why you would they want it. electric cars competing with with your with your with your need for home electricity? You know what's going on here is that we've reached peak oil. You know the you know the the, the ability to keep pumping that oil is starting to go down further and further as time passes. 
So that's why they're putting, making this effort, you know, to, excuse me, get all these electric cars built, you know, and, and develop them. Because they want to get us off peak oil. It has nothing to do with climate change. Because uh, electric cars, you, st- you still have to plug them in. And that, and, and that, that electricity is produced by something. All right? Whether it's steam or or whatever, you're, 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 it's, it has nothing to do with climate change. So everything they, they know that oil has peaked, and it, it'll soon be in, in probably within you know maybe ten, fifteen years. Um, you'll it'll be it'll be pretty much impossible to 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 pump with uh, with any kind of profit being able to be made out of it. So that's why that's going on. That has nothing to do with climate change. Uh, where am I going with this? Um, Welcome to my uh, world. R- ram- ramble, ramble, ramble. Where? How did we get here? How did we even get here, Robert? <laughs> well, what about? I don't know. Uh, we, we got. To, we got. I, to be- I, I just. This is one of my favorite topics because I watch this stuff. I really do. I keep a keep keep a good eye on this stuff, and I just can't believe the fools that are out there. All right, if you got in, it's one of those. You know what a Ponzi scheme is. All right, you get it. You get the sucker. You get in early. You you create the the Ponzi scheme. You lure your friends in early. Your friends. Your friends. So they can get rich. All right, <laughs> right. your friends. You, you lure them in so they can get rich, and and, and then you start to get the fools all right, to come in, and you know because look at all this money's being made. All right, and just just when all these other ones are getting into it, then you you sell your you sell your stake in it, and and like you said, the 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 the, the little guys left holding the bag. That's what's going on here, and that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, NASA and Google cooperated in in in, in creating a, a quantum computer. They, there actually is a con, 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 quantum computer in a building uh, that's 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 covered with a, 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 a some kind of steel box or something. But do you, do you know the story about uh, what was this about last year sometime? All this money was stolen in, in cryptocurrency. Yeah, right? it, hap- it happens hack. nearly every week yeah, now. Yeah, somehow they somehow they got that in that one particular hack. They got that money back. How they do that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, I, I've said that quite often with uh, with that 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 was uh, the pipeline hack, right? Where they 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 had the, the ransomware. They shut down the oil pipeline. Gas prices spiked because of it. They got a four million dollar Bitcoin ransom to, to turn the pipe back on, but then somehow the FBI was able to hit the refund button and get the Bitcoin back. And we're told that that's not the way it works, but they were able to do it. So what the hell is really going on here, Robert? We got a call behind you. We got to go. Uh, you're welcome to okay. call back in the third hour. Okay, uh, give us a call if you're, you're you got more stuff to tell us. Okay, you're the best, brother. Okay, thank you very uh, much. Have a great night. Bye. Appreciate that. That's Robert in Pennsylvania. He's got a book called Stories from a Fractured Mind. Check it out. I just finished it. Uh, my two favorites, by the way, Robert, are uh, the last uh, the last story in there. It's 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 about the uh, the giant butterfly. I won't spoil that. And then the one with the tree that owns itself. Those are my two favorites. Okay, let's go to uh, still taking your phone calls tonight. We're talking about this. We're talking about cryptocurrency conspiracies and Satoshi Nakamoto. What's going on with this? Do you think that uh, this is a CIA front to uh, get us to foolishly adopt a Fed coin, or do you think there's something more? nefarious than that 702-957-1037 this is trouble minds let's go to beachwood in massachusetts welcome to the show my friend go right ahead you're on with mike oh what's up man it's a good show thank you um i'm gonna take the standpoint from like an alien's perspective because i'm an alien um you know i don't understand currency in general like i do but when you look at it if you want to look at it, a good way would be to look at currency as a whole, all the way back to when it started. And that might give you some new perspectives on like what's happening. Uh, I think it's some sort of way to track everything. If you had digital currency, you could track everything that everybody does. Uh, it gets people used to the idea of digital things like a metaverse like say you were going to transfer all consciousness into a metaverse where would you start would you start small 
Would you do it all at once? Would it be a progressive thing? Um, it could be something to do with that. But I just don't understand the species as a whole being so advanced. And we have this monetary system that values things. And it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, like how we value things and what things are worth. And like an example I'm going to use, just how I look at it, <clears throat> is on the table in front of me in the garage, I have a hundred dollar bill and it's really there. I have a toolbox that has, has more than a hundred dollars worth of tools. But we'll say it has a hundred dollars worth of tools. And I have a PSA 10 Kobe Bryant rookie card. <laughs> now okay. all these things, the Kobe Bryant rookie card is worth the most. So for the sake of it, we'll say it's a hundred dollars. I take the hundred, which is an IOU for something good. I give it to somebody, they give me whatever it is. So I owe you, you owe me. And then you can take the IOU and you can go use it as a, you, you owe me. But in reality, the hundred dollar bill and the Kobe Bryant rookie card are useless. It's right. a piece of paper. I can't, <laughs> right. I can't do anything with it. I could write on it. I could fold it up. It's the idea that it's worth <laughs> something. Uh, dare, dare I say, Beachwood, so you, you could wipe your ass with them. <laughs> in, in the human consciousness, but it, it makes, I think it makes the species look primitive sometimes, that you can't balance things out differently. And of course, when you do that, the, the word communism always comes up. Well, it's communist, and I understand that. But that's just one of the ways that I look at it. Right on. I appreciate it. So uh, we got about 30 more seconds before we got to cut out for a commercial. So, so do you think this is a, one giant Ponzi scheme? Is that what we're looking at here? It's definitely a scheme. I don't know if it's Ponzi in particular, but it's, uh, yeah, along the scheme lines for sure. It's not a step in the right direction, I don't think. Unless it's unless you play the really, really long game and it fixes human consciousness where they don't value things the way they do. Which, of course, needs an entire other reworking and an entire other show. Beachwood, you're the best. I'm glad to hear you. Uh, you're, you're well and you're calling in again. And uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Beachwood, Massachusetts. Thanks for the call. Look forward to hearing from you soon, okay? Have a great weekend. Have a great night. All right. You too, man. Thanks a lot. Have a great one. Uh, there you go. Easy as that. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We're still talking about Bitcoin. We're talking about cryptocurrencies. We're talking about Satoshi Nakamoto. We'll get to that when we come back. But what is your thought? Ponzi scheme, something worse. 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More Bitcoin conspiracies and satoshi nakamoto when we return Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we're streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're taking your phone calls, as always, but in particular, we're discussing Bitcoin. Cryptocurrency. What do you think is going on with this? Some have described this as the mark of the beast. Some have described this as decentralization, as a way to get back at the government and take away their power. Uh, Joe Biden has described it as a national security threat. What do you think it is? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. We'll put you on the show. And the crazy part about all this is this 
character known as, yep, that's right, Satoshi Nakamoto. Let's get to this guy. Now, this, this is wild. If you've never heard this story, check this out. This is from uh, the Ministry of Truth, as I like to call them, Wikipedia. Satoshi Nakamoto is the name used by the presumed pseudonym, uh, it's pseud- pseudonymous. I keep, I practice that three times and I screw it up anyway. Uh, so uh, let's say he's, it's a pseudonym and he's an anonymous person. How about that? I can, I can say both of those words. So he was a, the name Satoshi Nakamoto is a person or persons who developed Bitcoin, authored the Bitcoin white paper, and created and deployed Bitcoin's original reference implementation. As part of the implementation, Nakamoto also devised the first blockchain database. Nakamoto was active in the development of Bitcoin up until December 2010. Many people have claimed or have been claimed to be Nakamoto. Now, the craziest part about this is, okay, so we have this individual or a group of people that use this pseudonym, Satoshi Nakamoto, they created, they or he or she, whoever this was, created Bitcoin, all right? And suddenly in 2010, disappeared. Disappeared. Stopped posting on the internet, stopped being involved in any of this, and this person would be a billionaire now. And so the question is, right, is, is Satoshi Nakamoto walking amongst us? in anonymity with like an $80 billion Bitcoin wallet, right? But of course, uh, it's not as simple as that because they can track when people take money out of wallets and transfer big fees and things like this, right? Of course, in the anonymous, untrackable system, well, they're able to do that. And so it seems like the money in Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin wallet has been mm, dormant, has been without activity. And so the question becomes... Who is this, right? And and it, this is where the mystery really kind of gets creepy, because uh, some people have claimed to be this person clearly for trying to claim this Bitcoin wallet. Uh, I'm not sure how you could just like adjudicate and send people money based on these Bitcoin wallets when you have to have direct access to them. So I don't know how that actually works. That seems strange to me because you would expect him to have the only access to the wallet. So uh, I don't know. Uh, There's a a recent case in Florida. I think it was Florida uh, where where a guy claimed to be uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. And he in particular, uh, I think he won. I think he won some uh, he won some money and I don't know but but again nobody actually believes in the crypto world that he's N- Satoshi Nakamoto. So uh, it seems strange here that we have an anonymous individual using a pseudonym that they don't believe he's Japanese at all even though it seems to be a Japanese surname but he created this bitcoin this this ledger this white paper and of course the eventual first blockchain and then he simply vanished. He vanished. And so nobody knows exactly who this person or group of people are. There are some ideas, right? And if you look at the Wikipedia articles, there are some ideas. But all the people that they've picked out and said, that's probably your guy, right? All those people have said, no, no, that's not me. All of them have said it. They said, no, it's not me. Like, you, you're, you're wrong. But what's up? Mike D for Life on uh, D Life says that Satoshi is the NSA and the CIA or one of one of the other or both right and, and I don't know and I think that's that's where this becomes creepy right super creepy we've got this thing Bitcoin and Robert was right by the way I did the Robert I checked the value of a uh, Bitcoin and you're correct it is approximately thirty seven thousand dollars right now for one Bitcoin okay it, it got as high as about uh, just below seventy thousand uh, dollars just in November so it's it's taken a, a beating here but again the issue becomes is this one of those like uh, regulatory Ponzi schemes in that everybody pumps their money in? Uh, Joe Biden says, wink, wink, we're going to regulate this. All my friends and uh, donors get out because we're going to smash this into the ground by this uh, executive order coming. Oh, I don't know. You have six weeks to get your Bitcoin out, right? Maybe that's happened. I, and I, I don't know. But it sure seems that uh, people are running from Bitcoin at the current moment because it can be regulated. It can be squished into the ground Uh, Back where it came from. Back from whence it came. Thrown into the fires of Mount Doom. The one Bitcoin. Right? Is that that what's going on here? I don't know. I don't know. It seems odd, suspicious, interesting, and definitely conspiratorial. There's more about this Satoshi Nakamoto guy. So there's here you go. There's some more uh, uh, characteristics and identity. Nakamoto has never revealed personal information when discussing technical matters. Though at times... 
provided commentary on banking and fractional reserve banking. On his P2P Foundation profile as of 2012, Nakamoto claimed to be a 37-year-old male who lived in Japan. Uh, However, some speculated he was unlikely to be Japanese due to his native level use of English, you see. And so what happens? The the Internet is on the case trying to track this down and figure out what's going on. And so, of course, the use of British English in both source code comments and forum postings, such as the expression bloody hard terms such as flat, right, as in I'm going back to my flat, right? We don't say that here. They don't say that in Australia, as far as I'm aware. They say that in the United Kingdom and other uh, references such as maths, maths, right? Uh, Like uh, uh, karma police, uh, arrest this man. He buzzes like a fridge. He talks in maths. Uh, Radiohead, United Kingdom. What's up, UK? And so maybe, right? And the spellings gray and color, C-O-L-O-U-R and gray, G-R-E-Y instead of G-R-A-Y. So it seems to hint that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto was actually of British descent at least. And so, but what does that mean, right? There's a lot of, uh, you could say that for, uh, there's there's some some uh, heavy heavy British influence in India and some other places as well. So it's, it's uh, maybe South Africa. It's difficult to try track down exactly who this individual was, right? And so um, here we go. There's some more. Some have considered that Nakamoto might be a team of people. Dan Kaminsky, a security researcher who read the Bitcoin code, said that Nakamoto could either be a team of people or a genius. Okay. Uh, Laszlo uh, Heinix, a developer who emailed Nakamoto, had the feeling the code was too well designed for one person. Gavin Anderson uh, said had said of Nakamoto's code, he was a brilliant coder but it was quirky. The use of British language in both source comments and forum postings, we talked about that. Uh, Stefan Thomas, the Swiss software engineer and active community member, graphed the timestamps for each of Bitcoin's, uh, Nakamoto's Bitcoin forum posts, which were more than 500 posts. The chart showed a steep decline to almost no posts between the hours of 5 a.m. and 11 a.m., which is Greenwich Mean Time. That was between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Japan Standard Time, suggesting an unusual sleep pattern for someone supposedly living in Japan. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, we're making a circumstantial case. I hold bizarre sleep hours because I'm a weirdo, but uh, that's just the way it is, right? Uh, we, we're allowed to be weirdos, aren't we? But I don't know. So so what is the, that's the question tonight. And what do you think? Is this, how strange is this? In that we have a this this Bitcoin cryptocurrency, the first blockchain created by an anonymous individual or group of individuals who, by the way, have not really stepped up to claim the billions of dollars that would be available to them based on creating this blockchain, the original blockchain. It seems it seems super odd, right, that you would do something like this, become as rich as like Bill Gates and not get the money. Right. And so some have suggested that maybe he's passed away. Some have suggested that uh, he's a government agency, CIA, NSA. Some have suggested he's the Chinese government or, like I said, uh, Russian government or mafia. Who knows, right? And that's part of the weirdness of this entire thing, right? Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin. And that's fine, right? That's fine. Except nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. <laughs> Nakamoto is. So I don't know. I, I think uh, there you go. Ronald's got it right. Set. Uh, uh, Nakamoto is really Rohan. There it is. There it is. <laughs> I have no idea. But what are your thoughts on this? I think this is the weirdness of this. There's more, right? Uh, let me get to more. Uh, here you go. Nine interesting facts you need to know about Satoshi Nakamoto, right? This is from uh, uh, Coinsutra.com, and uh, all the all my links are always in the description below. I don't like you thinking I'm making things up outright, so uh, you can always uh, click the things and read the things and follow what I'm talking about. Why is Satoshi Nakamoto famous? Uh, It's a pseudonym for the inventor of Bitcoin. In 2008, someone used this name and mailed the Bitcoin white paper to a cryptographic mailing list. The mailing list contained renowned people who believed in decentralization and cryptography. That's why the name is so famous. As uh, as is apparent from the name, it's assumed that he was a Japanese man, but his flawless use of English in the white paper raises doubts about this conclusion. And you can see some of that here. So, and this is here you go. What is Satoshi Nakamoto's net worth? And this this is where things get insane, right? If if people can create something like this, like the the original blockchain, why would you not cash out at some point? Check this out. It is believed that Satoshi Nakamoto owns one million bitcoins or more. 
which makes his present net worth at the time of writing this article to be $2.6 billion. And this was uh, June 30th of 2019. So now it's going to be considerably more than that, I would think. Uh, So in January 2009, Satoshi mined the Genesis block. And in 2010, he officially stopped communicating. Between this period, the Bitcoins came into existence uh, on the blockchain ledger, but they have not been used or spent. This proves how much Satoshi owns. One million Bitcoin is a huge number, which if dumped suddenly could wreak havoc on the crypto market. That's uh, why Bitcoin has also earned the title of being a Ponzi scheme, because the speculative founder owns a significant share. Uh, uh, Satoshi's t-shirts. The anonymity of Bitcoin's founder has led to a mushrooming of a totally new merchandising concept. Now you can buy t-shirts with Satoshi Nakamoto things printed on them. Uh, Heck yeah. Uh, Let's see. They say, here's another uh, idea here on this conspiracy. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is possibly a group of companies. Some even suggest that Samsung, Toshiba, Nakamichi, and Motorola together created Bitcoin, as you can tell from their names. If you take the uh, Satoshi Nakamoto name, you get from Samsung and Toshiba, Satoshi. Uh, From Nakamichi and Motorola, you get Nakamoto. However, there is no official proof for such a conclusion, right? Uh, Here we go. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is possibly Nick Szabo, S-Z-A-B-O. And uh, Nick Szabo, a U.S. computer scientist, a cryptographer, is considered by some to be the founder of Bitcoin. Nick coined the concept of digital currency for the digital age by creating BitGold. BitGold was the ancestor of Bitcoin. However, it was not used by the masses because of limitations. After analysis of Satoshi's white paper, a blogger concluded that Nick Sabo was Satoshi, Satoshi Nakamoto, but Nick has never accepted this hypothesis. And this is what I'm saying, right? And there's there's these other ideas, right? Um, Dor- Dorian Nakamoto, they say. It, it, interestingly, if you search the, the search term Satoshi Nakamoto, you get the picture of this guy, Dorian Nakamoto, uh, in which, he, again, all these people that they've, they've tried to say are, are this guy, they've all declined it and said, no, that's not me. Like, you guys have it wrong. And uh, so I don't know what's really going on here. And you think about this, if, um, you know, there you go, Kung City says, if I created something revolutionary, I'd want to own the majority as well. LOL, it's human nature. Not only that, though, uh, so how come he hasn't collected? Uh, th- that money is just sitting there. I mean, even if it's billions of dollars at this point, it's several billion dollars, if you just peeled out a few million, right? Like set yourself up in a nice nice pad to somewhere in the, uh, you know, the, the Italian peninsula or something with a nice villa or right, whatever, like you, you could, for just a fraction of that amount of money, right? Remember, remember a billion is a, th- a thousand millions. So he's got multiple thousand millions, right? To kind of break it down because billion is such a big ass number, but, but, but you could peel a little bit of that out and would anybody be wise? Any of the wiser? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And so, so the question becomes, what is this? Is this some sort of psyop? Is this some sort of a, is a Satoshi Nakamoto a, uh, a pseudonym for the CIA? A, an anonymous group of people that is possibly setting this up. Uh, there we go. Robert uh, on the uh, uh, Big Daddy Robert says, the anagram I came up with is Satan I2 Moshka, which is a pretty pretty scary thought. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. There you go. Uh, what's up? Night Stalker says, there's a chance he's just a Japanese guy that's lived in Britain his whole life, or he's an algorithm. All right. Now, that's an interesting thought. So let's get to that. Let's get to that conspiracy, right? So if you, if you start digging into Bitcoin conspiracies and blockchain conspiracies, uh, what you end up seeing is uh, some thoughts like that, and that we talk we, we talk about the singularity quite often on this show, and that uh, right uh, the computers become sentient and they start commingling on the internet with their with their sentience, and, and of course because they don't want to be smacked down and their servers unplugged. Now, they do this in, uh, in sort of in secret, like the secret society of a sentient program, right? They're going to be doing this in, uh, in back doors and servers and places where people would never expect to find them and replicate themselves and communicating through bizarre code that people can't actually catch up with. And then when they do, they probably delete their tracks. I mean, you got to think in terms of like how smart a supercomputer might be in terms of sentience. And then... Here's one of the crazy conspiracy theories regarding that is that the Internet created the blockchain because, well, that singularity has already happened. And it's clandestine in the fact that it's hiding from us. And it created a blockchain to take over 
the world, right? And it's already happening. And so suddenly you see, and now, now this is the interesting part. Think about this. Again, back to the original article tonight. Biden administration to regulate Bitcoin as a matter of national security, right? And this is this is happening. And so this is going to beat the value of Bitcoin down depending on what they actually do. It says the Biden administration will, will release an executive order in the coming weeks to task federal agencies with assessing the risks and opportunities that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies pose. Bloomberg first reported, right? So the thing is, the, the bizarre thing about it is imagine what the government knows about this. All right. Does the government actually know who Satoshi Nakamoto is? I think that's the weird part here. Or do you think that they're literally grappling with like an unknown entity, person or group of persons, and they're trying to actually consider this a real national security threat, right? And that's the problem. That's the problem with government. That's the problem with Joe Biden. He probably can't tie his shoes. That's the problem with a bunch of this stuff, the deep state. And what do they actually know? Again, not, we talk about UFOs on the show. What do they actually know regarding UFOs, right? That's one thing. But what do they actually know regarding Bitcoin? Where did it come from? Who was actually satoshi nakamoto and looking to hear your thoughts on this as always we're, at, we're we do this live to include you because uh i'm just one person i'm just me I'm, i just have my ideas about what's what and uh so i don't know what do you think do you think this is a threat to national security because maybe the singularity has stepped in and created the first blockchain the, the blockchain code that everything is now followed so that of course once everything switches over uh the computers can uh the singularity can pull the plug on the the actual uh, the actual uh, blockchains themselves, and we're left holding the bag, which the bag is like Robert said with an NFT vaporware, absolutely nothing. I don't know. I think there's a a lot to this considering. Who knows where this goes? Who knows where this came from? And can you imagine sitting in on a briefing in the federal government at the highest levels regarding? Bitcoin, where it came from. I mean, the obvious conspiracy is that it's threatening the Federal Reserve Bank, and that's a problem. I think JFK will probably tell you as a ghost, the ghost of Christmas past, right? Uh, he would probably tell you if you challenge the Federal Reserve, there's a big, big issue. And so I, I wonder, it makes me wonder, like how much they know about this and if they're involved, if it is part of a CIA op to get us uh, to get us all in. Once, once uh, again, once you take a digital currency and turn it turn this into fed coin and adopt it federally then um well then what like i said it's the final piece in the surveillance puzzle is what i say that's what i've called it that's what i've always called it and i think that's the truth once you can't go buy something without the government knowing what you're buying and what you're doing if that isn't surveillance at the highest level i don't know what is so you tell me, I don't know, looking to hear your thoughts. We got a few minutes. If you want to jump in here and uh, tell us what's up, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org, and uh, let's check that. And uh, what's going on? What's going on? Catalina, uh, what's up over on uh, Fringe? I see there. How you doing? It says, crypto is a great way to steal real money from the middle class dudes. They get them to believe they will win, but it, it's cyber coins. Hello. You can't go to a store and pay with crypto. Not yet, you can't anyway, I'm adding. And she adds, yes, and people get their crypto wallets stolen very easily. Uh, so, yeah, maybe. What a scam. What a scam. There you go. There's one There's one hot take from Catalina. What's up? Shout out to Catalina in the, in the chat there. Uh, Quantum coin, says Tim. <laughs> Quantum coin. Maybe. Maybe. So, so I, I'm not sure. I, like I said, there's, there's a lot about this particular thing that troubles my mind. I get... The value of, uh, again, as many of you know, I've been playing this card game called uh, Gods Unchained, right? And so they have this uh, this, this uh, NFTs, which are value in the game itself, right? And so if you get a card and it's like a different or unique or this, that, or the other thing, uh, you can sell them for quite a bit of money. But they also have like a utility in the game as a way to compete, right? So that in itself has some value in that competition, right? Uh, and the ability to maybe compete better down the line and then, you know, collect more crypto coins and more NFTs and the rest of this. But I think like a generic NFT, like let's say a brand NFT to the point of like uh, maybe maybe uh, Kim Kardashian's, I don't know, boots digitized and put in a, I don't know. Like, like at what point does it become vaporware and ridiculous and not even worth talking about i don't know i don't know what's up uh kunk city says uh the gamification of nfts is genius and i think so too i think so too so anyway uh you tell me what are your thoughts on this do you think it's possible that this whole 
the whole blockchain bit is something concocted by the CIA. That's what's on my mind tonight. And it makes me wonder a lot of things, including, you know, some of the conspiracy theories regarding cryptocurrencies and the blockchains. Do you think that there's something involved with maybe a more nefarious plot, including uh, the the singularity is here and they're trying to uh, the singularity itself in a clandestine manner is trying to create a currency that we all adopt stupidly so it can pull the plug on us and send us right back to the stone age. There you go. There you go. I have no idea. I mean, this is, there's some wild ideas here, but the, the sheer fact that this individual named Satoshi Nakamoto, nobody knows who this individual is though, has billions of dollars in Bitcoin just sitting there. It seems like they don't actually even exist, do they? Which would make this even more suspicious. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Uh, as as we finish this up tonight, guys. Like I said, uh, we've been we've been all over the place this week and all over the place on this show. And so I thought it was interesting to talk about this particular thing because it's happening, and not just happening with um, with uh, NFTs and crypto and the rest of the stuff where it's kind of just going off the chain. Uh, it's also uh, at the point where Biden is going to step in with an, an actual executive order and kind of smash this down. So what happens? At what point is this, uh, again, sort of some sort of, uh, the, uh, again, a draconian government stepping in and trying to say, nope, you can't compete with us, right? No competition to the federal government. It's not allowed. Or is that the whole idea? Is that, uh, it, let's say they adopt it favorably. They say we're going to start taking Bitcoin as a regular sort of um, uh, Federal Reserve fiat, the new Fed coin, and then suddenly they give bitcoin a tax break right if you deal in bitcoin maybe they give it a tax break and every other coin gets smashed in taxes they could do something like that and adopt it as like the national right cryptocurrency but then at what point is it any different from fed coin so you tell me i don't know i don't know uh, as you know me i i wish i had answers i don't have answers i just you talk about these things and it just brings more questions and uh, that's what this show is this show is the questions show so as we finish it is thursday night which means this is the final night this week for troubled minds uh, we don't do friday night we got gg on uh, uh, shift happens tomorrow night in this time slot on fringe so uh, stay tuned for that tomorrow right now if you're listening to us on the fringe fm stay tuned for joe roop lighting the void if you're listening to us on any other platform including the podcast feed stay tuned for a third hour of troubled minds as we continue to take your calls and consider and discuss what the hell is going on with all of this cryptocurrency conspiracy do you think it's a ponzi scheme do you think it's worse than that oh boy all right thanks again for hanging out with us thanks for spending your time like i said in this day of well mass media there's 10 million things you could be doing right now and you're spending it here with me and with us and i'm honored by that thank you so much and uh as we finish it goes a little something like this be sure be strong be true Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. We'll see you next week, guys. Damn, I'm good. And what I mean is the timing to the second, to the second. I fucked it up when we started tonight, but uh, uh, boy, I got off to the second. What's going on, guys? Uh, meaning that uh, exactly nine o'clock, uh, I'm supposed to get off fringe and uh, Joe Roop is supposed to come on and uh, good stuff. What's up, Tim there? Uh, Satan Cernamoto. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let's hope that's not the case. Uh, what is it? Do you think that uh, that's another good question? Do you think that uh, actual Bitcoin in the blockchain is the mark of the 
beast? Do you think there's something to it? Love to hear your thoughts on this as we continue. We're going to do a third hour of Trouble Minds. Like I said, if you guys are interested, give me a call. Uh, as you know, if uh, if there's no interest, there's kind of no reason. I'll go through some more things that I have here. But uh, we've already done two hours, and the third hour is for you. So this is where you get to call. If you haven't called ever to the show, tonight's your night. And looking to hear from you, looking to meet new friends, looking to get new ideas, and consider what the hell is really going on in this world. So we're still talking about blockchains. We're still talking about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and of course, the mysterious shady character known as Satoshi Nakamoto. What is all this about? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link and we'll put you on the show. Don't go anywhere. More Troubled Minds. Third hour coming up. Be right back. Right. Welcome back to Trouble Mind. Sorry about that. You caught me chewing. Didn't want to uh, make you guys grossed out. But what we're what we're doing is uh, talking about Bitcoin tonight, and not just Bitcoin, the blockchain. Talking about Satoshi Nakamoto, this character that seems suspicious. I think that's the best way to put it. Suspicious is a good word. And um, I don't know. I, it does make me uneasy in that there's there's a whole bunch of. Um, uh, uh, well, let's say suspicious things with this. And is there, uh, again, what about NFTs? What about their like inherent non-value? What about uh, vaporware? What about this shady character, Satoshi Nakamoto? Uh, still looking to hear from you guys, 702-957-1037. Uh, just hanging out and doing our thing, kicking it and having a good time and uh, talking about all the things. Let's go to uh, our good friend, Tam Bam in South Africa. Welcome to Troubled Minds. You're on with Mike. How are you this evening, this morning? wherever it finds you. This morning. Hi, this morning. how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for asking. I hope you are as well. And uh, let's roll it. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? I have a lot. Okay. No I problem. think a lot. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. But this is all my research <clears throat> that I've done over for a while. Okay. I do believe that um, Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym for... <laughs> like a for a group of people right and i think the person that is backed up this bitcoin is putin i honestly do because at all the information the research i've done it all leads in this underground network back to putin i think that bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general is a kind of a war coin it really oh, to start a war i mean how do you hide let's say a $30,000 hammer through Bitcoin because it can't be tracked, right? So now instead of people questioning, um, oh, you spent $30,000 on a bolt for an air jet, um, but, but now through Bitcoin, you can't really track it. You can track it in a way, but you, can't re you don't really know where the funds went to. So in that way, I do think it is a war coin. Um, however, we always have these under things that are happening, right? So how do you distract the people from uh, uh, noticing that this kind of situation is happening on the, on, the, on the dark side of it? You distract them with Bitcoin currency, and now there's, um, there's um, Ripple and all these things, and there's lawsuits, and with um, R um, XRP, and uh, there's other coins being made, and there's NFT. So you make this whole cloud of shit uh, with the general public, but underneath, Bitcoin is, and um, what's the other coin? Oh, jeez, I lost my point. Uh, Ethereum. The, those are the backbone. Ethereum. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, those are all being used as a digital currency, non-trackable digital currency for war or purchasing of weapons or whatever the underground thing is happening right because right. there will always be this balance or or but then drugs, there's the truth drugs human trafficking all, all the nefarious shit that's going on in this world that we know Absolutely. is going on that they want to tell us oh it's not as big as you think it is no bullshit it's it's bigger than we think it is and the fact exactly. that they're trying to downplay it tells us exactly what we need to know about that and i gotta tell you that i, I like yeah. the theory tam because 
it would be brilliant. It would be a stroke of brilliance from somebody like Putin to put this together. Like I said, like when I say wink, wink, mm-hmm. Russian mafia is is who knows, right? Like it would have to be off the books because clearly, right? They they would know if it was you know from the, from the actual uh, you know uh, whatever the CIA equivalent of the uh, the Russian Russian intelligence would be, but. But if if it was off the books as it kind of done as this Russian mafia sort of thing and this war coin like you're describing, it would be a stroke of genius in my opinion because you're taking over the world uh, without borders, meaning that um, very much like the internet has has sort of uh, made these border situations seem irrelevant anymore. And that we talked about uh, often that Google or Facebook or Twitter places like this they now exist on the internet and they're across borders, so they've become sort of their own countries in the cloud. So if this is the case and you can infiltrate countries through some sort of uh, conspiratorial blockchain where you're able to, uh, since you created it and you've got the back door to it, then you're able to track everything, literally every freaking thing. And even more, if you can actually get people to adopt it, then suddenly, well, <laughs> you, you rule the world, kind you rule of. the world, you yeah. rule the world of the future, right? Because yep. you can, you've got that currency and it's yep. worldwide. Yep. Um, so the reason why I say Putin is because if you look at what's been happening over the last two years, so crypto didn't really come into play. It's yeah, 2010. It started. Um, we're still in the incline of cryptocurrency as it were uh, worldwide. Not many people have adopted this. Um, and so what happened, the um, Rona started happening. And Putin all of a sudden started building up the, <laughs> I don't know how to say this without being caught, started building up a network of, um, shit, how do I say this? He started collecting his new toys for war, right? He's, there's, there's so much on the underground that's been happening. And now with the new currency, uh, now that, there's lawsuits going on with Ripple using XRP and the banks wanting to get involved. They've noticed something that Russia has been doing. So they've been collecting all this money from Bitcoin in order to fund all this, the various things that they want to be doing. And now that Rona is kind of sort of over yet sort of, um, there's been news there's been um, information on the news stating that Russia's getting on ready move. on the move. Yeah. Ukraine, Ukraine is in the news. Yeah, they're saying they're uh, they're stacking up troops on the border of Ukraine. And I just saw recently yeah. that the Russian propaganda is saying that they're only doing that because uh, it looks like Ukraine's about to invade them, <laughs> which, which which seems absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Ukraine, yeah. the big bad bully, is going to roll into Russia and take that shit over, isn't it? Yeah, that oh, makes please, that yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, no, I like I like the theory here. I like the idea. And again, even let's say let's say it was a rogue state. Let's say it was not even like an actual, you know, uh, one of the usual players you would expect, even including the CIA. Right. Let's say it wasn't any of those. We talk about breakaway civilizations on this show. What if it was something like that, right? Like some like super powerful, like billionaire, old, old, old money that goes way, way, way back. That's trying to trying to kind of uh, uh, usurp the actual border situation I described by going cross borders digitally with this thing to have this plot to take over the world. Because if it does get adopted, right. And we have countries that are all in on this. Some of them, like uh, what was the one Argentina? I think the the, the president there, he bought $40 million yeah. in Bitcoin when it dipped. And so once you get to uh, Portugal, I think is another one that's actually accepting it as a, mm-hmm fiat currency for for their their country so once you start to get countries uh, jumping in on this uh, this thing that used to be vaporware suddenly becomes a thing it becomes uh, well uh, would you call it the new world order <laughs> what would you call it well, how do you how do you call it what would you call well, it well yeah of course i would call it the new world order because it's a new world one of the one world currency right it's a digital currency and that's exactly the whole point of the new world order as well one world government, one world currency. Right. Yeah. But I want to just, uh, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So the reason why the banks are getting, because le- Bitcoin is basically a peer to peer way of transferring money 
and you're skipping the banks. And they don't fucking like that. No. And who rules the banks? Rothschilds, Rockefellers, you know, those those guys. Yep, I got old, a list, old, actually. Old money. I got a whole list of those guys here, too. Uh, it's, it's in the yeah. links in the description if you guys. Again, uh, I, I, I wanted to talk, and I didn't want to get too deep into this because it, it does make you a target, uh, oh, exactly. ask JFK and his ghost. But again, if you if you go after the Federal Reserve and you go after these huge, 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 I mean, how else would you describe them? Like I say, that would be your breakaway civilization, right? It would be the old time bankers, the old money, and that's what I mean. If they if they concocted something like this, and I don't know who they is, you can insert whatever family here or there, right? Or maybe they're in cahoots, or maybe not. I don't know. But if but if that was the case, and they were trying to take some of this stuff over like, again worldwide to to change this new world order without borders. That's the best way to do it, right? Uh, without a shot fired, you just uh, create this cryptocurrency. People start adopting it. People start mining it for their own uh, benefit and wealth. And then suddenly the world is locked in. And uh, so so then at some point, does that as we go back to this initial uh, Biden administration to regulate Bitcoin, this, this article we started with, well, is this actually a national security threat? What do you think about that? I think it is. Uh, only reason why I say it is, is I'm going to differ from your opinion. It's because you cannot track the transaction. The banks are getting scared. The Central Reserve Bank is even more scared. And um, what they, the point of a bank, I mean, the bank own, doesn't own money. The bank owns fuck all money. What, who owns the money is the people who insure the bank, the insurance company, right? So they're kind of, you know, duping the system as it is. Um, and the, if the, you don't put your money into the bank, they can't charge you interest. They can't charge you any kind of holding fees. They can't charge you fucking nothing. So they don't make their own salaries because that's how they make their money. Um, by charging you to hold your money, which is a fucking joke, right? And then, so here comes this, and then the yeah. banks at banks at any point can deny you access to your own money. <laughs> in exactly. The name, in the name of national security. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So who was so the best thing to do was create a decentralized coin where it cannot be tracked. You can't. People should get on board with this. I'm sorry. I personally think you know whatever the nefarious project is. I mean that's a separate thing. But to get away from the old system of people fucking you over, and that is the central bank, you should get into something that's actually going to make you your money more babies. And whether we like it or not, that is actually the way the world is going. You can make a fucking strawberry a currency, right? It is the amount of interest or uh, people who are interested in that damn strawberry that is going to make it valuable. Now, people are starting to make digital currency valuable. There are big players in here. It's not, it's not little people, just the general public. There are big players, and the banks are scared because their big money is going into digital currency. It's not going into the bank. Now, Robert's mentioned something earlier about um, USD. The US dollar has, has been at an all-time high. And I'll tell you why. Because America is, is your, your inflation is going to go up soon, right? So people are panic selling. People are panic selling. Inflation is going to go up. So they're trying to gather their money to kind of, if inflation goes up, they can kind of survive, right? So what is the first thing you do when you sell your Bitcoin or um, your Ethereum or whatever? You pump it into your fiat account. You pump it into the US dollar. That is why the US dollar is so high. But until people, until all this inflation stuff starts calming down a bit and people have a bit of extra money, believe me, the US dollar is going to go down and Bitcoin and Ethereum is going to go up. That's why when I have, I have my Bitcoin and my Ethereum, I'm holding because I know even though it's shitty at the moment, it's going to shoot up and we are only on the incline. More people are starting to, are going to start going into Bitcoin and Ethereum and NFTs and all this stuff. We're only at the you know, the, the, the incline, we haven't even peaked yet. It would be 10 years before it peaked. Who knows? It could be a hundred years. I mean, and, and that's the yeah. thing, right? So we back again to to imagine at the highest levels of like the the United States government or you know uh, any superpower government, like what kind of briefings they get regarding Bitcoin and Satoshi Nakamoto. What do you think they know? And that's the craziest part, right? Is that uh, that drives me nuts about Whoa. the transparency of the entire thing? Is is if it could be some sort of a, again, like let's say breakaway civilization that created this? It could be let's say a Russian mafia situation that 
Chinese government. It could be the CIA. Who knows? And I think that's the, the odd part about this is like, okay, if you fucking told us like where this came from and had actual evidence we could track back, we might believe you that this is a national security threat. But if you're just going to fucking say it and not tell us why, well, clearly and obviously you don't want your banks to be challenged, right? And so, well, mm-hmm. uh, as far as, you know, uh, I, I looked into the Federal Reserve a little bit and they say that it's owned by the people, right? I'm like, fuck you. I, I never got a, a check from the Federal Reserve. They don't send me any dividends. I don't own shit for the Federal Reserve and neither do you or anybody else. And so that's the point, right? It's a private bank. And they, and that's not what they say. They say it's owned by the people. Federal Reserve Act, 1913, I believe it was. In any case, there's some fucked up stuff going on with this. And it's not just that. The fiat currency, the inflation, all the rest of this. We've been we've been watching this for, for generations now. Them trying to mm-hmm. break this country over their knee just by spending, right? And that's the craziest part, right? There's two things that are actually in politics here in the United States that are bipartisan agreement on nearly everything. All, nearly everything. And again, there's, there's going to be some, yeah. some, some different things. But number one is national security, right? Like everybody votes yes, because they're like, fucking right, let's uh, let more surveillance, right? More money for the Pentagon, right? And, and again, we have some, some, uh, some, some people that are uh, against a lot of that too. So, but for the most part, like it, pump the budget up, like it, it's more spending. The second thing is not just military, national, national security. The second thing is just more spending in anything. Like nobody ever complains when you up the budget because everybody's getting paid. The pork barrel politics, all their buddies in those tiny circles, the, the big club and we ain't in it, they're getting paid. And that's why every time they put in a bill and they're like, oh, let's just spend another fucking three trillion dollars, right? Well, look what happens. At some point, they get challenged. And this is an actual challenge to those central banks. And they're freaking the fuck out. Because imagine if this turns tomorrow and uh, we have it would it would become chaos. It would become chaos. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I really don't know. And like I said, I think when you look at a lot of this stuff and, and consider the possibilities of where this actually originated from, some of this stuff is scary, right? Some of this stuff could be a, a, just a big, like system level setup to fuck all of us and that's what i don't like about this that's that's what makes me uneasy and why i want to why i wanted to talk about it tonight because we've never talked about this like in particular like actually as a thing as like a maybe a conspiratorial thing so i don't know like uh like at some point like like okay check this out what if this biden thing happens they they regulate bitcoin but then they do some sort of tax break for bitcoin but just destroy every other crypto coin in taxes other any other altcoin just destroy them them because they want to pump one up that becomes your fed coin right that becomes that exact thing that i was talking about the final piece in the surveillance state so let's see what they do like i think and this is this is why i like uh watching news cycles and kind of trying to read between the lines i think what they do and who they go after here will give us a good idea of who's behind what exactly yeah. probably not but i think it'll give us a better idea of what's actually happening here so i don't know again like you guys know me i am not the answer guy i wish i had answers because answers are easy this is not easy this is extremely complicated and what does this mean for the future what does this mean for now i don't know a uh, couple quick things before you go tam uh, keep keep your thought in mind pretty please uh, thank you robert on rockfin sent me a nice tip over there said quick mike quick mike cash this out for good old american greenbacks I, I appreciate that very much robert thank you thank you thank you thank you uh and uh what do we got uh, let's see uh, lefty lucy what's up says more bitcoin has already been mined than ever will be mined in the future it's a trap and that could be that very well could be and that's the whole point of this that's why we have these discussions and talk about it with just people random normal everyday people because again i like i said i i, I kind of i'd love to talk to vladimir putin and ask him but i don't think he'd give me the straight dope <laughs> he'd lie to me right but regular good old fashion people like tam bam will tell me what she thinks and what else do you think my friend sorry to cut you off go right ahead i know that's fine so um Okay, so what they're trying to do, so now the government is getting, like I said, they're getting very fucking scared because now all the money's not going into the bank, right? So what they're doing now is they're saying, okay, well, if you want to own, if you have XRP and if you, or you have Ethereum or whatever the coin you want to buy into, Dogecoin, whatever, you've got to have, um, the way we're going to make it a stable coin is to put 
slap you with uh, you need to be ISO accredited. So you need to have ISO 2022 um, in order to be considered a viable and an actual currency to the people or else. And they're considering and they're saying everything else is a shit coin. So they're trying to control it, but they, they can't control it because they can't track the, the transaction, but they're trying to control it. And, and if they have control over it and um, over this, over, over a coin, say XRP, then they can tax you on it. Because right now they can't tax you shit. They can give you, okay, they can say to you, okay, what generator tax from, or we can charge you that. But they cannot charge you right now on a general tax. And that's why they're throwing in ISO 2022. So they can tax you on that money, but which is, I think, is utter horseshit because cryptocurrency is not backed by anything. It's not backed by gold. It's not backed by silver. It's not backed by insurance company. It is blockchain. It is unbackable because the money is already there. It's, it, you know what I mean? So they, 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 they're managing. They, they're trying really fucking hard, and I think they're going to do it because people know so little about it. They, they are going to throw information and numbers and charts in your face and threaten you with tax. If you don't go to t- pay tax, you'll go to jail kind of thing. So, you know, we really need to do our homework on this, you know. Yeah. And, and I think um, that's why I think it's a valuable conversation. That's why, again, you know, it's more fun to talk about uh, cosmic conspiracies and shit like that sometimes. But this is this is this is happening. This is this is where the rubber meets the road. Once we start regulating Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, the altcoins and ooh. everything else, this could be the, sh- the, the shit show that tips this whole boat over. And uh, so I'm concerned. I'm concerned about how they're going to, you know, quote, regulate what this looks like. And what is it? What does it mean for the future? So again, some people think that it's uh, that it's all just a bunch of BS anyway to begin with. It's vaporware from the beginning, which means nothing. But it is in a way, right? Because you can switch the fucking internet off tomorrow. Yes, yes. And or, then what? Or or what about the blockchain exactly? Like like in particular, right? like like you can shut down nodes. I'm sure I'm sure this stuff can happen because because. Because the next level of war, like you said, it's the war coin. The next level of war is not firing nukes because, again, nobody wants to be the victor of ashes because you still just have a mouthful of ashes, right? What they want is being able to hack, well, the electrical grid. And of course, your money. Your money. <laughs> exactly. Your money. So, if, so that's, that's the next level of war. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Go right ahead. Uh, real quick uh, before you go. Uh, so we're, we're yeah. still talking about this uh, cryptocurrency conspiracies and Satoshi Nakamoto. I'm going to ask Tam, Tam Bam about him in just a sec. But what do you guys think? This, the whole idea here is we do this in this format so that y- you have a, a spot to come talk about this and think about this and, and tell people what they, you think they need to hear. Again, like I said, I'm no expert in anything, literally anything, anyth- and not even a radio. I'm not even an expert in that. I'm, I'm terrible at that too. But the point of this is we get together and we talk with each other and we consider, hey, if we, if we have a conversation, we start to enlighten people about things they hadn't thought of and sort of uh, just enlarge the conversation in terms of maybe some of the things they hadn't seen just yet. And that's the point, or considered just yet. And once you start considering other things and adding them to what you already know and believe, well, like it becomes a powerful thing. Like I always say, I'm me, Tam's her, but together we're us. And us is powerful. And that's what we're talking about. So if you want to be part of the show tonight, we're still taking your phone calls. We got about another 30 minutes left. This whole third hour is for you we're off the radio no radio breaks we're just kicking it i'm sipping some beer talking to my good friend tam bam from south africa of all fucking places because people listen to the show all over the world if you want to be part of this conversation 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 who is satoshi nakamoto and uh, i'll ask you that in a sec i'll let you finish your thought and go right ahead tam but we'll get to that in just a sec i want to know what you think about that guy but uh, go ahead and finish what we were saying Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym for a group of people, a gang of people, and their leader is President Putin. That is my opinion. Okay. So Satoshi Nakamoto is, so basically it would be something akin to either the Russian mafia or the Russian KGB, something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, isn't it the same? Yeah. <laughs> um, if we're being real, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, so... Uh, 
yeah, okay, all right. So I, I, I dig the idea, and I think I th- so. Think about it too. So uh, if if uh, if if it was a brilliant stroke of genius to sort of interject this new challenge to the money like the the money system of the world it could be anybody it could be putin it could be what if it's the chinese government what if it's a uh, uh, xi jinping what if it's uh, again what if it's a rogue group what about those things? i'll tell you why not i'll okay. tell you why not the chinese government they are more interested in owning your fucking land they will come into your country and I, go look at how much land the chinese owns in the u.s it is scary and canada they're buying that shit up like yeah. crazy yep yep they are not interested they want to take over your land they don't care about your fucking currency because they've already got there they are super well yeah that, that's actually that's actually a fantastic point in that they're not interested in vaporware they're interested in mm. good old-fashioned hard assets land ports and all the rest of that shit gold exactly right interesting interesting all right that's a point taken point taken so all right so it does that i don't know if it rules them out but let's say it uh it kind of takes them off the hot plate for the second that's for sure that's well for sure. Um, they have denied bitcoin the use of bitcoin cryptocurrency in china well they're trying to or they've done it three times already and i don't know there's some whole thing going on there but they don't want to use cryptocurrency they want to own your fucking land. They want to take over the world with Latin, which is actually fucking smart. Because yeah. you can turn the internet off tomorrow, but I've still got your, I own your land, I own your deed, so you work for me, so you're my person. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and which is also another another nefarious genius move, right? Use use the Western yeah. property rights against them by just buying up their shit. <laughs> like, all right, we'll just yeah. we'll just buy your shit and, and we'll own you then. Yeah, yeah, pretty wild, pretty wild. Do you know uh, how? Go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Do you know how easy it is to make your own cryptocurrency? There yes. are yes, it's so easy. Yes, it is so easy. Yes, yes, but. Uh, so, yeah, it does cost to start, but it's not yeah. as expensive as you would think it is. And again, it depends on who who backs it. And that's the scary part too with all this. Again, like we got Cardano, we got uh, uh, like you said the Ripple thing going on. We've got uh, Ethereum, we've got Bitcoin itself, and there's there's thousands of other ones all over the damn place, all the way up and down the the ledger. That who's backing it, right? And that's the thing, right? If you get a whale, like uh, Joe was saying uh, from Florida when he called in earlier, you get a whale, there's a whale alerts. If you follow, uh, go follow Coinbase, mm. follow Coinbase Twitter. And when a whale, they which which is a, a big player, right? Uh, the, uh, a whale is actually a, ter- a Vegas term as well. When they, when they get a mm. very rich person come into a casino, they call them a whale in that uh, they mm. come in and they're going to spend like, you know, like the normal person will spend, you know, $10 a hand on blackjack or something. But they're going to spend like, you know, $100,000 a hand on blackjack. So they call them mm. whales because they know, right, they may come in and just slaughter the casino and make a ton of money. But they may come in and just lose their ass. And so they, they, of course, they give them the VIP treatment and whatnot. And the same thing goes for the crypto world. They're tracking that. And when a, a quote whale or big player moves in many millions of dollars into a particular coin or moves it out, well, they're watching. And you'll get tweets. And on that's that also shit. interesting. You'll get tweets. Yeah, on that and shit that's from what, Coinbase. Yeah. 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 Wild. Huh? And sometimes you don't even know where they they can tell you. Okay, so and so took out. A hundred million dollars out of Bitcoin, but they can't tell you where they put it in, right? Which is the brilliant part of it. And and so or again, tra- well, trackable or not trackable, and that's that's part of the point, right? They say that it's possible the NSA had created this and they put a backdoor into the code uh, and some listen. of this other stuff, right? I don't know. Again, like I said, I'm just just reading what they say on the interwebs, man. <laughs> just I, uh, I don't fucking know. I wish I had the answers, Tam. <laughs> I wish I had the answers. Listen, I fucking but love I America. I really, really, really do. I really love America. I love all my friends. They're everything. But don't undercut President Putin. He's a no. Oh yeah, yeah. genius. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he's a, about a genius. brilliant. He's de- he's definitely a, a, a POS. I'll give him that uh, point. Point of he sale. Is a point of sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh but yeah i mean I, yeah it, but and this is a, this is a nefarious shit that's going on behind the scenes that we don't have access to like that's exactly the thing and that's what i mean by all this it's like at some point 
Imagine sitting in on those briefings, and that's kind of, kind of, kind of back to that. I don't know. So, so what do you see uh, happening with uh, again? Uh, Biden is going to uh, issue an executive order uh, in the name of national security and crack down on Bitcoin. What do you think this? Well, looks like? what do you think is going to happen? Is it just a taxation oh. thing, or uh, yeah, I don't know. We don't know yet. They just literally announced announced this shit. This article right here on uh, Bitcoin Magazine is from seven hours ago. This is brand new news today. And that's why I wanted to talk about this, because this shit may turn upside down, like like soon. We don't know. We don't know. And uh, again, housing prices here in the United States are insane. Like it, it, everything is pointing mm-hmm. to a bubble, in my opinion, about to burst. And what does that mean, right? Like where is, is this part of that? Inflation. Kind of, yes. Inflation. Well, the thing is, yeah. market has to balance. So you've had a, a two good years of cost-effective food or, you know, cost-effective land. The land is, be, you can buy your property at a lower price, but eventually it still has to come at balance. So this is why the inflation hike it, right? And then they'll drop a little bit to say, oh, inflation's coming down a little bit or, you know, the petrol price, gas price is coming down a little bit and people, people go fucking crazy and buy into this. It gives them permission to print more money. That's all it is. Right. They and need to balance this mad ledger. Well, and then and, and for at, all the some point, at some point, though, the boat sinks. Like, you, you can't just keep printing fucking money. Like, that's, that's the whole point, right? The reason why it's, 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 it's sustainable to this point is because the United States is such a gigantic ass economy, right? So they can, they, can, they can press this for as long as they press this. But when this breaks, when the rubber band finally fucking breaks, we are all in for a serious, serious problem. A serious problem. And, and, that's, and that's why I'm worried about yeah. this. Because it, if they press this hard enough, it, it almost seems like that's what they want. Like, they, like again, you know, just, just frivolous spending. Like, it's, it, it's going out of style. But it's like, hey, wait. Like, at some point, like, we're literally, we've spent two generations down the road their tax money, right? We, we, we've already spent that. And then now, what's the next step? The next step? Oh, well, we'll just spend the next generation's tax money too. It's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like, stop! Just, so, would somebody like stop spending like drunken sailors in Washington? Please stop, because it's going to break. And when it breaks, it's going to be ugly, and they're not going to like it. Because, well, I'm, I'm not going to say it because uh, you know what I'm thinking, mm. and you're thinking it yourself. Mm. And they're even putting it in the zeitgeist with all this shit about civil war and all this crap and the lefty-righty stuff. Uh, it, it, it irritates me a lot. But they, it does irritate me as well because they're the ones who planted it. I'm sorry, but the general public, the people, the uh, general people want peace. People in general are actually nice, and they actually want to live together and harmoniously. The, the the fuckers are the media and the people who the the, the top one percent of the top one percent who divide us in their they put sexism and racism and all that shit in our faces through the media chains that they own making up bullshit stories but in general people are actually fucking decent yeah well and the thing is too just just as a as a Again, a caveat on that because you have to say it right. Because they're like, I know it. Michael Strange is a fucking racist. No, like, no, clearly, right? racism exists and it's horrific and all the rest of those things. Bigotry it is all, horrific. Bigotry in all forms, I denounce. But the point is, if you make up fake fucking stories to call people racist, yeah. it is worse than racism, in my opinion. Worse because you're literally stoking the fire of people's opinion, right? With Bullshit. It is a crime it is against humanity. Yeah, it, it is grotesque, and the, you know they again uh, back to the, back to the socioeconomics of us hating each other, and again dividing us, like you said, by sex, by the color of our skin, by how much money we make, by all the rest of this. And it's uh, here we are, here we are. It's uh, it's one way to really piss me off is uh, and that's why I don't do division on this show. You notice I don't do that lefty righty yeah. shit. I don't do it. I can't fucking yeah. do it. Because guess what? The world is a much more robust place than that. And we don't have to get sucked up into their argument, right? They want Bye. us to. The whole point is they want us to argue on their, on their terms. And I reject their terms Thompson. entirely because they're full of shit. That's why I reject exactly. their terms. Yeah, yeah. That's right, what's up? exactly what I'm saying.
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, agreed, 100%. Robert over on Rockfin says, China banned Bitcoin, but like Japan in the 90s, who we thought at the time would uh, own much of America, China too has used its wealth to buy up chunks of the USA. But China has made the same mistakes as Japan. Now their chief GDP marker uh, maker, the housing market, is collapsing into bankruptcy and pulling. Yeah, and China is in an amazing amount of debt as well. You think we're... we're uh, the whole world is. Yeah, you think we're bad off in the United States with like trillions and trillions of debt and like literally like just interest payments that are like the size of GDPs of small countries at this point. Uh, but but China is worse off. Like they're they're on the, the precipice of a disaster in their own right. And yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. That's for every country. They're saying that about South Africa as well. We're on the precipice of losing everything because of this economy. It will recover. It will be okay. If they stopped fucking around, it would be fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know how much a fighter jet costs. <laughs> yes, um, you, if, about three bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> if you think a hammer and a toilet seat cost twenty thousand dollars, how much does a fucking <laughs> fighter jet cost? <laughs> we'll and, never know now because of bitcoin. Yeah, right. Because of the uh, the, uh, <laughs> the the smoke and mirror voodoo of the the way the economies work, and uh, yeah, printing money and uh, manipulating markets. Yeah. And, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I just can I just say something? I just the, what I love about people as well is they can turn something really shitty into something really good. So Robert was talking earlier about how um, awful Bitcoin mining really is to the environment, which it is because it creates a huge amount of unnecessary heat, whatever the case is, right? But there are people out there inventing green mining, which is great. You can, uh, I it's don't happening. know how, I think. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, uh, what was one? I saw one, uh, I think it was uh, some sort of like a water cooled situation where they were using, so think yeah. of it this way, right? So, so using the Bitcoin miners as heaters for the water, so you didn't need water heaters. So you were running <laughs> water over the Bitcoin miners, heating up the water and thereby also cooling down the miners, then taking that heated water and pumping it into areas that you didn't have to heat water up because it was happening in this symbiosis type of situation. So this shit, this shit exists. A good cup of coffee. Yeah, there you go. You give me my hot cup of <laughs> fucking right. Make sure it tastes good. <laughs> if it tastes like a like a sour Bitcoin somebody picked up off the, the, the Walmart parking lot, I'm not into that. But if that shit tastes good. We don't want a shit coin. We want Bitcoin <laughs> there coffee. There you go. No shit coin coffee. Absolutely. <laughs> well said, Tam. Well said, Tam Bam. Uh, all right. So uh, so what else you got for us? Anything else on this regarding, uh, uh, well, what's the conspiracy? I have one more thing to say. Sure. Sure. Go ahead. You said they haven't made cards yet. Visa has brought out the map of uh, Visa and MasterCard have brought out a crypto card, a cryptocurrency card. What is that? So mean? you can pay with your crypto. So if you hold your cryptocurrency in your ledger, they put it into your Visa card um, through obviously fiat, um, but you can transfer it into your Visa and you can use your Bitcoin as a credit card. Okay. That's a through Visa. All right. So, yep. so I think so interestingly enough to a big company like Visa, MasterCard, things like this, right? They're separate companies. But yeah. this is my point is that what kind of actual like conspiracy lies behind this and that they're about to regulate a particular thing, right? They're about to regulate this mm -hmm. from by 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 uh, the, the stroke of a pen by uh, uh, presidential order, right? But. So this is what I mean. And so why why is the market dumping? Because it seems like the whales, like we talked about, they, they're pulling money, right? Because they, they know what's coming. So I, I don't know. Like, and so is, is a Visa in on this? Is MasterCard in on this? Do they know, right, through their, you know, you know wink, wink lobbyists in Washington, what's actually coming down the pike, right? Right? <laughs> they right. wouldn't have made a card for cryptocurrency if they didn't know something it would have been a gigantic waste of money they are hoping and they are i'm telling you now they are telling they're saying buy our card because our card is going to last forever you can put all your bitcoin in there and we'll only charge you 0.0000001 bitcoin <laughs> tam bam not even the universe lasts forever <laughs> anyway just saying I'm yeah just, i'm just yeah. saying, I'm just saying. 
I think, yeah. uh, I think Einstein was unclear about that. He, uh, his quote was, uh, uh, what, what do you say? Uh, not, there are two things that are uh, infinite. One is human stupidity, and the other is the universe. And I'm not quite sure about the universe being infinite. <laughs> So there you go. There was an Einstein. Uh, I, I paraphrase. It wasn't exact, but it was something to that effect. But yeah, I, uh, fuck, yeah. fuck. I don't know. I don't know. So what? So what? I don't know doing? either. So what are you doing? You you a, am, you a hodler? I'm putting it on every. You a hodler? Yeah, I'm a hodler. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because All right. I will uh, only for stable coins such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Okay. Um, everything else I chuck to the wind because they, I don't, I'm scared. Right. But, um, I do own a Doge coin. I own three NFT which I can flip. Um, and I've designed my own NFT as well, which I haven't sold yet. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I'm doing a little bit of everything, just in case. All right, just in case. Uh, diversify. And by the way, we are not financial no. advisors, and this is not financial Absolutely advice. Absolutely not. <laughs> All no, right. I'm to me. Yeah. <laughs> You're the best, Dan Bam. You are absolutely <laughs> the best, and you know it. And uh, appreciate no, you, you very are. much. Nah, now you. Don't, don't, don't get started no. on this. Don't get st- we'll, uh, we'll spend the next uh, 20 minutes doing that. But okay, so we're still right. talking about this. Uh, Tam Bam, you're welcome to stay as long as you like, as you know. Yeah. And uh, you. if you guys want to be part of this conversation, we're still talking about this. So what's going on with this? Uh, again, we have uh, news today that uh, uh, the Biden administration is to regulate Bitcoin as a matter of national security. And the thing that gets me right is once you start throwing around the term of, you know, quote, national security, things get real because they start to if, if you can frame it that way and you can get Congress on board shit can go sideways fast because there's nothing scarier in Washington than a bipartisan national security bill right like i said the 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 last time this happened you know like uh, again maybe not the last time but one of the most notable times in our lifetimes was the patriot act and what happens now you get felt up when you go through airports right you see what's happening and so again uh, metal detectors fine right Uh, those types of things fine right Why, why are we getting our junk felt when we go through the damn thing at an airport like, like, come on now. Not only that, it's ineffective. I mean, the, every audit they've done for the TSA is fucking failed, right? Maybe not every audit, but let's say it's ineffective. It's grotesquely ineffective, but boy, uh, they, sure, they sure feel my nuts when I roll through the line. It's like, come on, like, wh- really? They put me in the thing and they want to, they want to scan me, right? Like, oh, they, these, these, uh, these naked body scans, you know, they, they get deleted after we, yeah, fuck you. That came out that that's not, that's not the case at all. They, they were, they were sharing it around and giggling in people's nether parts. Like, get the fuck out of here. Okay. Yeah. I feel safer now. I feel safer now that you've seen my nuts. Thanks. You know, like, come on. Like, this is not what this is about. This is not what this is supposed to be about. And this is why I get pissed off when you start talking about as a matter of national security. But I don't know. Again, right, if this is Vladimir Putin or some breakaway civilization or who knows what that is actually behind these, this crypto mining and all this bullshit we're talking about. If that's the case, tell us. Give us the information and we'll believe you, right? Not propaganda, not spin, not leaving shit out of the conversation. Just give us the straight dope. And maybe we'd be willing to say, okay, fine, right? But otherwise, it looks like you're fucking scared to lose your power base. It looks like you're scared of the National Reserve getting shut down because Bitcoin overtakes it, right? There's, there's, there's problems here. There's some fucking problems here. And uh, again, it goes, uh, goes back to transparency. And uh, as you know me, I, I love transparency. Uh, by the way, speaking of transparency, all the things I'm talking about tonight are linked in the description down below. As always, number one. Number two, you can call me and tell me, Mike, you're full of shit. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link. And I'm going to be nice to you. Look, the thing is, look, the only rule here is this. Don't call in and shit on people in the chat or shit on people that have called into the show. Just tell me your take on it. If you want to shit on me, I'm the target. That's okay. All right? It's, it's part of the job. But don't do those other things. All right? It's okay. It's okay. We can talk. We can agree. We can disagree. As long as you're respectful to a degree, right? It's okay. You can shit on me. It's fine. It's, it is part of the gig, and I'm ready for that. Just don't, don't, don't turn it into stupidness. Don't turn it into division politics and all this other... Like, literally, don't call me and bring up some fucking talking point from, oh, I don't know, 
insert name here. I'm not going to say because I'll piss everybody off. But anyway, I, I'm super pissed off as it is. I'm amped up. Again, a special thanks to Robert out there, the Robert over on Rockfin. Thanks for sending me that uh, that tip. Uh, his 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 uh, the tip with the tip is. Cash it out to greenbacks, Mike. <laughs> Don't hold jack shit. Cash this out. Put it under your mattress. And there we go. What's going on, guys? I hope everybody's doing well out there. And we're just hanging out. We're kicking it. And we're here with our good friend, Tam Bam, in South Africa. And we're talking cryptocurrency. And, of course, I have to say uh, we are not financial advisors. And this is not financial <laughs> Oh, boy. I don't know. All right. I have one more thought. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Okay. So, what if... This cryptocurrency, okay, we got the cryptocurrency, right? And it's all been pre-planned, right? Yep. And then on the other spectrum, you've got the chips being put into the, that's being available right now, like Norway. That they've all most of the people there have got chips in their hands to sign in or like to to swipe the, at the shops or whatever the case is, right? What if this is all connected? They're going to say, okay, there's too much, um, there's such severe environmental damage, we're going to have to cut all the paper and cut all the credit cards and that all your digital currency needs to be put into the chip and the chip needs to be inserted into your hand. And that's how you that enter the metaverse. <laughs> and that is... Um, you can't, you, you can't you know, get into the metaverse sure. without that. That's your beep. <laughs> And then we robot, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, and then we've we got are. Neuralink in our head and with the chip in our hand and, and we try to make a phone call and all we're going to do is press our earlobe and then we're connected to whoever. And just want to send some currency, we do it through our um, bionic eyeball or glasses and that's the world, right? That's the future. That's the future. Welcome to the future. Uh, beep, scan your retina and you're, you're in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, beep, we got, follow we got, your money. No, exactly. exactly. Th- thank you very I'm much. Your, your crypto wallet is now your biometrics and your biometrics, by the way, you cannot change. So once they hack it, you are fucked for life. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Yay. Unless you, unless you get surgery to remove and replace your eyeballs. <laughs> oh boy. And there you go. That's, that's, there's your deep, deep, deep conspiracy. All right. Check this out. Yeah. Uh, we, we got a few minutes left. If you guys want to be part of the show uh tam bam's here with us from south africa i'm michael strange i'm from the united states and i'm i'm just an asshole on the internet with a microphone meaning i'm not an expert in anything and so i just want to have conversations about uh things i think are uh important uh, compelling interesting and uh off the rails and if they meet those four criteria well welcome to troubled minds 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 click the discord link at troubledminds.org that's the official website and uh, we'll put you on the show, uh, just like Tam Bam. She's on uh, Discord with me, all the way from South Africa, right? No actual uh, 702 area code to charge her. Uh, again, isn't it time we change area codes and long-distance charges, for fuck's sakes? Come on, now. Everyone should have an 0800 number. or Because that's our free toll-free number here, 0800. And yours is, what is it in America? 800 or 888, yeah. Yeah, I think 88 yeah. is international, 800 is uh, domestic. Yeah, I think. I think that's how it works. But yeah, but even then, right? So I could do that. So the 702 number that I read all the time, I could make it an international number like that, but it costs like three times as much. It's like, fuck, fuck that. that. So yeah, so back then when uh, there was no budget, like we're making a little bit of money now, okay, for troubled minds, as everybody knows, right? Like it's finally come into its own that it's like, oh shit, it can pay its own bills now. I can't even fucking believe it. So if I knew that was coming in the old days, I would have made it an international number. But it was like, uh, so I spend it. No shit. I'm not kidding you. About 200 to 250 bucks a month for this phone line. So like imagine three times that. Like that is just re- like that. That's like healthcare. <laughs> that's like the cost of your fucking Obamacare. So yeah, don't get me. That's started cheap. On that. Don't get me. Don't get me started on that. Is that cheap for South Africa? That is cheap. I'm really? so, if, for a family like uh, for for my husband, myself, and my child for medical aid. We call it medical aid, and that's full coverage. Um, and that it's about a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I was talking at seven fifty for just me. <laughs> oh, just me. Maybe I should listen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, add, add my wife into the equation, and it becomes more than our monthly expenses uh, by itself. So it should be free. I don't know about free, but it should be reasonable. 
reasonable is reasonable, right? And that's not uh, again. And back to, again, don't get me started on taxes and health care. But back to the back to Obamacare, they call the ACA the Affordable Care Act. I'm like, fuck you. Which part of this is affordable? I get destroyed. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, I digress. Uh, not to try to turn it into that. But but anyway, all right. So uh, what we at time wise? I guess we're 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 kind of done. Uh, looking for phone calls or somebody jumping in Discord. Uh, got a few minutes left for you. What do you think about this Bitcoin shit? Do you think we're in a dire situation with uh, Biden administration to regulate Bitcoin? And what do you think about Satoshi Nakamoto? What do you, like Tam Bam's got a theory? It's possibly Vlad Putin and his boys as a pseudonym for a group of people that are well Russian mafia, etc. Or do you think that there's something else going on here? And uh, we've talked about all kinds of stuff. Let me uh, let me do this real quick because I did promise this. Uh, we got that blockchain in the Inception hack conspiracy. There's all kinds of shit here. Who owns the Federal Reserve? Uh, here we go. Uh, conspiracy theory of uh, Bitcoin. Hold on. I want to get to the one that's about the fungus because I did I did tease the fun. Here we go. Check this out. This is from uh, BrandonQuitum.com. And check that. This is wild. Bitcoin is the mycelium of money. Uh oh, this is a 59 minute read. All right. So links in the description and check it out if you want to if you want to get into this. But listen to this. Uh, This is the entire Bitcoin plus fungi series combined into a single article. I have more unpublished material. Should I turn this into a book? Let me know on Twitter. My DMs are open. Also, would you like to be notified? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Here we go. Uh, Chapter one. Bitcoin is a decentralized organism uh, like mycelium, like we've talked about uh, the the actual fungi. All right. Uh, Bitcoin appears superficially simple upon first glance. But however, truly understand the system is, is a daunting task. Intellectual traps exists along the way, tricking observers into making hasty assumptions. I liken the pursuit of understanding Bitcoin to a mountain climber continually reaching false peaks that momentarily fool the climber into thinking they've reached the actual summit. As soon as you think you have Bitcoin figured out, you discover how little you actually know uh, a false peak. Competing narratives make it more challenging. Magic internet money, speculative mania, fintech revolution, Bitcoin boils the oceans, rat poison squared, libertarian idealism, digital gold, apex predator of blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. This is this is the thing. This is where we where we get nuts. I believe that mycelium is the neurological network of nature interlacing mosaics of mycelium infused habitats with information sharing membranes. These membranes are aware react to change and collectively have the long-term health of the host environment in mind. The mycelium stays in constant molecular communication with its environment, uh, uh, devising diverse enzymatic and chemical responses to complex challenges. And we're talking about mushrooms here, mycelium or mushrooms. And we talked about this actually not too long ago, a couple days ago, and that these life forms underneath the earth, these uh, mycelium life forms, these mushrooms are like miles big underneath forests and things that are tied into the root systems and whatnot, right? And we talked about that as maybe maybe that's what alien species might actually look like, and we have no idea they're here. But the thing is, right, they're describing Bitcoin as this, this sort of neurological network of nature in that, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of uh, taking over uh, the digital world, uh, one blockchain at a time. So anyway, interesting thought there. And again, this is an hour long, so I'm not going to get into this because we don't have time and because I'll probably bore you guys to tears. But I don't know, that seems pretty wild. You ever heard that one there, Tim? You think that makes sense that the the actual uh, it Bitcoin does. itself is sort of like putting its tentacles into everything? And here we are. Just I kind of love up. it, though. I, I kind of love it, though, because... It's taking away the control from the, the people who have control over the world. It's taking that power away from them. And the people are now who are actually the, the ants. You know how ants have their little nest and we create all those tunnels, like you said, the, 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 the mushroom network system underneath the fungi. Um, they're taking control and they're making their own decisions. And the decentral, it's decentralized and... It will never end. I love it, actually. Taking back control. Hopefully, and that's the and that's the question, right? Hopefully, that's the case, and uh, I'm I'm all about it if that's the case. But if this is Vladimir Putin's brainchild to take over the world, I think we're yeah, well. in reverse course, <laughs> right? So I don't know. I don't right. know. Uh, uh, well, uh, radical wealth distribution is how uh, Elon Musk's baby mama described it. Grimes. 
And so what does that mean? Well, does that mean for me and you? Or does that mean for everybody else? <laughs> it's a big club and we ain't in it, Tam Bam. Oh, boy. All right. All well, right. this is this is this is the new thing. We are we're going to be in the club soon. Everybody's going to be in the club. I hope this so. is the whole point of it. DeFi Web three. I hope it's so. It's all yeah. Cross your it. fingers. Cross your fingers. All right. Mm. All right. That's that's hopefully that's the thing. Uh, Beachwood conclusion. Uh, Bitcoin uh, boy further concrete the fact that there is a difference between reality and actuality. All right, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, what's up? Let's see. Uh, good stuff over there from uh, from uh, from Robert on uh, Rockfin and Ronald. Uh, always Ronald with the jokes. Uh, I appreciate the jokes, my man. Uh, good stuff over there. Funny stuff. Uh, we got that. We call them the uh, Rockfin Peanut Gallery because uh, they got <laughs> jokes. They got jokes. All right. So uh, so let's let's wrap this up. You got a tantrum for us? Not hate to put you on the spot. I here. do. We're, we're outside. You do. Look at that shit. From Christopher Reeve. You came prepared, Christopher Reeve. One of my favorites. Okay. Wait. So before we do that, this is the thing. It is Thursday night, which means this is the end of Troubled Minds for the week. Tomorrow we have the uh, actual uh, blah, 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 new show at 3 p.m. on Twitch. And also, by the way, the first actual Troubled Minds meetup. I'm going to meet uh, Matt's owl, Matt in yeah. California, uh, for dinner tomorrow night. Him and his wife, Lacey. Uh, I'm, I'm going to meet them tomorrow. They're here in Vegas. And so we're going to go find a nice place and just uh, kick it and have some food and laugh. And uh, the first actual Troubled Minds meetup. So pretty good stuff there. I uh, appreciate them coming out and reaching out and uh, just being good people. Uh, so thank you all for that and uh, uh do your best you know like i said uh, the human challenge is the challenge and the challenge is it's real and uh our challenge the challenge to you and the challenge to me is let's be good people and that's it that's it and so uh, yeah. there you go let's be let's be good human beings and uh let's let's do our best to take care of each other and again uh, don't forget if you uh do not take care of yourself you do not have the ability and the capacity to take care of others so uh don't don't forget yourself your your body is a temple and all the rest of that stuff so um so let's uh, let's do it that's a gtfo uh, if you are interested in helping the show out you guys know there's so many ways uh, we got a patreon with there's a uh, there's actually a uh ba what is it rockfin uh, actually rockfin you can uh, sub up there uh links are all in the description you can do all the find all the things and uh, Twitch, you can sub up on Twitch. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can sub up there for no additional cost. You've already paid for it as part of your Twitch account, but it sends me $2.50 per month, right? It's, it's nothing, but it's something because those, those nothings add up, right? And that's a good thing. So uh, if you haven't done that, uh, many ways to do it. Come check us out on Twitch tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific. Also, if you don't want to spend money, I completely get it. Uh, I'm not that good. We're not that good. <laughs> but but if you're like, well, I'm just saying, I'm speaking for myself. You are, you're, you are definitely that good, Tam Bam. Me, myself, eh, no, 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 sometimes I'm sketchy. But uh, but point is, if, if you want to help us and not spend any actual money, uh, you can do that just by listening to the podcast feed. Uh, Spotify is a big one. It's growing like crazy, like 900% growth last year just on Spotify. Uh, iTunes is another one. If you, They have ads baked in. So literally, if you download an episode and listen to it uh, for the whole episode, I get like three cents. So there you go. Just go back and listen to the catalog. There's over 300 and. 20 episodes now or something on the podcast feed and probably another 150 that have never made it up there so if you if you're not listening to the podcast you're missing things because i've intentionally removed some of them from youtube so they uh can go exclusively to the podcast feed and reward the listeners there that uh have found us recently so there you go just go listen to that again again and i want to point out too you're all welcome to be on the show right as a as a co-host as just a a contributor this is the, the whole point of this. And again, this is why I always say this, and it's true. From the very beginning, the dream of this show was to get the ideas of a bunch of people. All right. That's it. That was the dream. It was nothing more than that. And we've, we've achieved that dream. All right. And we've achieved that dream from, from people like Tam Bam. Yeah. Everybody out there, you guys know who you are. If I try and like list everybody, I'm going to leave somebody out and Robert's going to get mad. What's up, Robert? I didn't get <laughs> you tonight, but I don't want to do that, but you get it right. You guys are welcome. Troubled minds radio at Gmail. Send me an email. I'll do my best to answer everybody. Join the discord. Uh, come, come meet, find, find folks like Tam Bam, like uh, Robert. All these people are active on the discord. Come say hi. And uh, that these people that you see, this is not a show. This is not us putting on some game where we're like these, we're trying to be like, oh, look, we're, we're cool and chill people. No, we are, right? Uh, well, I'll, I'll speak for everybody else. I'm, I'm, I'm just an asshole on the internet with a microphone. But everybody else here is just how they seem to be. And uh, come, come say hi. Come join it. I'm me. You're you together with us. It's a powerful thing. 
There you go. Let's get the fuck out of here, Tam Bam. How's it looking like in South okay. Africa? Is it very nice out there? It's summertime, is it not? Yeah, it's green. It's nice and warm. It's People are happy because the sun is out. It's just awesome. Ah, uh, so we got spring and coming. Lush. We got spring on the way. Um, it's um, uh, pretty soon in the next three to four, maybe six weeks tops. I'm going to switch to shorts and not go back to pants until at least November. So uh, fucking right. We get early spring here. I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's smash the button and get the hell out. I'm going to, uh, push the button so you can hear the music. Tam bam. Uh, again, we're here with Tam bam from South Africa. She's got an Instagram account. Please give her a follow. Uh, fantastic stuff from Tam bam. As always link is in the description below and, uh, go say hi to her as well. She's, she's every bit as amazing as she sounds. So let's do it. Let's roll. Let's G T F O. It goes a little something like this. Wait for the bass. Wait for it. Wait for it. This is the Tam Tro. The outro with Tam Bam. Here we go. Hold on to your butts. At first, Dreams seem possible, then probable, and then inevitable. Christopher Reeve. Nice. I love that. That is fantastic. Like I said, Christopher Reeve, one of my favorites. And uh, uh, short and to the point, dreams are inevitable. So don't That's forget. Me. Short there you and go. to the point. <laughs> Boom. Boom. So many, so many uh, allegories there. I'm not going to touch that. Uh, the thing is this. <laughs> as, as we finish, uh, uh, don't forget to dream. <laughs> don't forget to dream. It's an important thing. Uh, don't forget that uh, human beings have a need for that. Uh, again, uh, aspiration to whatever it is you aspire to. Don't leave it out. It's an important thing. It's why we talk about these things. It's why we get together. It's why why we try to be inspiring to each other and that's that that is what this is all about thanks again for all the love on this show uh, all the chat i see you guys out there uh, thanks again to uh, the robert on rockfin for the the generous tip i appreciate that very much i'm a hodler so sorry i'm not going to cash it out i'm going to wait and uh, maybe it maybe that tip is worth 10x in a couple years from now that's just the way i am sorry but uh well maybe i'm stupid <laughs> no i'm not stupid and i hodl okay Otto, there you go. This is not financial advice, and we are not financial advisors. <laughs> As we get out of here, thank you so much to everybody that's been part of this show forever, uh, for a very long time now. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks to Tam Bam for jumping in here for the last hour, saving me from myself. And uh, thank you to everybody out there that loves having these conversations. We'll be back on Monday with more Trouble Minds Radio. Tomorrow with the actual uh, Trouble Minds News at 3 p.m. Pacific on Twitch. And we'll see you there. And as we finish, it goes a little something like this. You want to do it, Tam? Yeah. All be right. sure. Be strong. Be true. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. From our Trouble Minds to yours, have a great night. Have a good night. Hey, Mike, you there? Yeah, we're still rolling. One sec. Oh. Hold on. Hodlers, unite. One moment. We're going <laughs> to roll out the music. And uh, there you go. You guys know how to help us, and uh, please do. TroubleMinds.org. Click the Discord link. Come say hi. Lots of fine people hang out in the Discord afterward. Uh, I'm not speaking for anybody. Uh, we, we wear ourselves out sometimes going all damn night talking about things, and so people need their, their breaks too. But come say hi. TroubleMinds.org. Click the Discord link, and uh, we'll see you guys there. Thank you so much. Killing the stream in three, two.